GS143-31811-A5 3, 3, regarding potential real estate acquisitions, partials 070900021X80-0709075, and 0709095A. Can I get a motion to go into closed session? Motion to go into closed session. All in favor? Unanimous. I was also told... Um, I need a motion to um, invite Brandy Deese into closed session with us. Oh, okay. Uh, all in favor? Unit unanimous. Do you want me to do the motion to close? David, you want to motion to close? Motion to close? Oh, yeah. Hold on. I was reading this. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Can I get a... Uh, well, first of all, I got, we returned to open session. So uh, can I get a, uh, somebody to, to give me a motion to close closed session? Motion to close closed session. All in favor? Unanimous. Can I get a, a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn special All meeting. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, 615 workshop. It is 609. Okay. Give me one minute to organize myself here for a minute. That might that take longer than a minute. but. <coughs> Price site concept plan. I'm I'm assuming you're here and ready to talk. So welcome. Yes, sir. I am, Mayor. Members of Council. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, my name is Bridget Grant. I'm a land use consultant with Morian Van Allen. Do you need me to provide address and address? No, okay. you're good. You're Perfect. good. Just no, checking. You're, you, you've said enough. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight on behalf of Prime Carolina as the developer for the site, and I'm also here with Hinuen. He's the civil engineer that's going to help me through any site design questions. As I mentioned, it's Prime Carolina's Morin Van Allen. I'm a land use consultant, and then DPR is a civil engineer. The site is a 39.12 acre site that's located just on the south side of Price Road, so it's combined of two parcels, totaling that 39 acres. The existing, count, the existing zonings in the county, it's the RA40, and we're hoping to rezone the site conditionally through the Indian Trail process to something that's similar to what's already in the surrounding area, which is SF5. If you were to look at the property overall, as I mentioned, the existing zoning is the RA40, and we would be able to develop single-family homes within Union County, but we'd like to do something within Indian Trail to provide a little more lot flexibility that ultimately also gets more open space and better lot design. So the proposed use is single family homes. The total number of lots that we'd like to develop is 98. That's a really small plan, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip to the next side, but I do want you to see that the total tree save required is 5.83 acres, and then we've got 2.8 acres of open space. It's much easier to read when you look at it at this level, but you can see we've got our access point right off of Price Road. The street network has sidewalk and street trees throughout. There's also an access point for the proposed extension of Fawn Drive you can see on the south side of the piece of paper. We have proposed tree save that's shown in the darker green around the periphery of the site. We've also got the two stormwater management ponds shown in blue and an area on the back side of the site to be dedicated to park and rec with a minimum 20 foot perimeter on that south side and north side of the property. I think the one thing that's important to note is that you can see that there's a good bit of open space at the center of the site and trails throughout. And it's one of the differences that if we were able to develop within Indian Trail and using the Indian Trail ordinance, we'd be able to provide more open space and tree save 
with a lot configuration that supports that natural environment rather than the larger lots. These are just a few of the architectural concepts we're looking at. We're still fairly early in the process, so we know it'll be something we collaborate with on staff to ensure that we're meeting the expectations of what you would like to see here in Indian Trail. And because community open space is such an important part of our vision, we wanted to share a few images that really show that this isn't just the open space that often gets pushed to the periphery of the site, the unusable areas, the areas that are in the buffers. This is something that we have a vision will be active trails, playgrounds, and opportunities for people to use, use the amenities, not just push them to the buffers. And with that, I am happy to answer any questions. How many homes per acre? Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight by thirty-nine, so that is two point five. Two point five. What? What did? How many? I'm sorry. Ninety-eight on thirty-nine acres. Ninety-eight on thirty-nine acres, and they're they're single-family homes, and S on how big? Approximately how big a lot are they? The so lot size is approximately eight thousand square feet. That's the minimum. And is that like a quarter acres? Uh, um, if you broke it down into. <laughs> I'm just curious. I, I, I don't know how many how many feet are in an acre, Brandy. So, so that would be about five per acre. Five per acre. But then they're counting all the open space, um, the amenity area, which gives them the two point five average. It basically puts all the open space into protected common open spaces rather than into backyards. One of the things I've seen throughout my career and working in various municipalities and even in my own neighborhood, people tend to take the trees that are in their backyard. The lawns keep on growing. The pools get put in, the basketball courts get put in the play areas, and you start to lose all the environmentally sensitive or protected areas. So when you pull all of those out and put them on the periphery of the site or in common open space, it does a better job of protecting the open space in the long term. Do you, um, do you have sewer for this? Or? That's a great question. Uh, sewer, is that something we have been uh, spoken and met with Union County Public Work already? There is an off-site sewer that is, uh, we, if we go out on that stop street uh, and then go back to the main, uh, main road, and then there's existing gravity sewer on the other side, um, and that's where we're proposing to tie in. So that will be a process, going through the rezoning process, and then we work with Union County Public Work for the gravity sewer extension. So Union County hasn't approved it yet? Uh, no, sir. Everything is conceptual at this point. Okay. Any, any more questions? Is this an annexation? This, it, 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 it would be an annexation. annexation. Yes. And... and um, so it's, it's in the county now, correct? In it is. You can see where the site's outlined in red. And there are some sites in Indian Trail that are right next to it, but largely the brighter orange area shows you majority of where Indian Trail is. Uh -huh. And we can provide another map to you to show there's some other. So you're, you're real near Porter Ridge High School then, correct? Isn't that, isn't that very near Porter Ridge? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Close to the Whitefield community, correct? Is that I would need to turn on some more map layers to confirm the exact neighborhood. Okay, so it's kind of, we don't really have much around there. No, so it's in the county now, and I guess you're relatively, you're, you're right in, so you're in the county, but you're, you're uh, right around the corner from Monroe, and you're, you're right between Monroe and, and Indian Trail, basically. That's one of the things that we've been working through. We know that there are site design options that we could work with in Union County and work with the lot sizes that they have. But smaller lot sizes and common open spaces outside of the lot sizes are more preferred by buyers today and more efficient use of the lot. So we wanted to explore the option of developing under Indian Trail standards the ability to increase the open space, do the park and rec dedication and donation, provide a little more certainty on the quality of homes that would be built on the site. When we go through the conditional zoning, we can add specific conditions on what you would like to see in terms of quality or materials or other features for the site. Uh, very good. And is this the owner? Are you the owner, sir? He's not. He's a civil or? engineer. No, I'm no right here. You. 
Yes. Uh, civil engineer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's not. No, not right there, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, yeah. he's the civil engineer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I am the uh, civil engineer uh, for the site. The owner is supposed like to be here actually today, <laughs> but uh, he's not. Yes. Thank you. All right. If we don't have any other questions, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. We appreciate thank your time. You. All right. Can I get a motion to close a special meeting? Do I need to get a motion to close this? But what? We don't do one, do we? Okay. Well then, we're good till six thirty. We've got six minutes. Typically, if you guys have comments on this project, if you can filter them through Mike, um, so that we can get them back to you, then it'll work. Okay. She wants opinion. I didn't hear it either. Mm -hmm. For or against? I'd like to see more information on this. Just shoot me an email or let me know, and I'll send it over to the planning department. You gonna send an email? You don't want it now. Well, okay. if you want to give it to me now, yes. I'll take. I'll wait for the email. I can okay. Be mm, thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Buddy, uh, if we'll all stand for the pledge of allegiance, and I noticed the Boy Scouts that moved in. If if you guys would <coughs> like to come up and lead us in uh, uh, the pledge of allegiance. I would uh, be honored if you would. Right there, be fine. Right, right here. all remain standing, please, for a moment of silence. You may be seated. Welcome to Boy Scouts here tonight. We have uh, Gary Sides here tonight, Union County Public Schools. You're going to get up and he's going to speak in um, public comments. So, welcome, Gary. Um, tell you a little bit about some town events. I think the only town event we have between now and the next meeting is the Harlan Wizards. It's uh, at Sun Valley High School. I think it's February the second, which is a Friday night. Uh, the night is funny, theatrical, exciting, uh, spectacular. The gym will will be uh, have. You'll just have a great time. Has anybody ever here, been here, uh, been to the Harlem Wizards? We had it one year. We had it last year. Jim, Jim, you were, you won the dunk contest, did you not? <laughs> I was thinking you did anyway. Uh, it's a lot like the, the uh, Harlem Globetrotters, and believe it or not, it's a great fundraiser for, for the town. A lot of the teachers get out there, and um, I think a lot of people, uh, staff and and council will be participating or doing something with it but uh, every dollar of that um, goes to I believe Hayden doesn't it go to a scholarship fund for uh, high school students and uh, it's just another thing that the Rotary Club another good thing Rotary Club does for the town and uh, for the people of the town so uh, much appreciated and we'll have a good time and is it sold out yet not yet, not yet. it will be sold out I'll, I'll guarantee you that yeah, it did sell out last time. You could not get a you could not get a seat in, in Sun Valley, so um, it, we had a good time. And then I um, I wanted to mention something too that's not on our list that I'm very proud of in uh, Indian Trail. We have something called the Laddie School of Arts over near um, Walmart, and uh, I went to a play, uh, Anesthesia. That right? Did I say that right? Uh, <coughs> um, last Saturday. They're amazing. Uh, and it's right here in Indian Trail. It, it was at the Dowd Center in Monroe. And the talent that we have in our town, it was a musical. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. Amazing. And they have another 
June performance, uh, I think they're going to do Footloose, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, um, man, get get on board with it because you think you're watching Broadway. I, I really I really believe that. So with that being said, um, it, it, it was a really good time. Brings us to a, uh, agenda additions and deletions. Do we have any? Okay, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, that brings us up to uh, presentations. And that is, Hayden, are you going to do that? This is the, the, to announce the 2023 Christmas Parade winners. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Should have held the parade today or last week. It's pretty chilly, so it would have felt a little more like winter. Um, you know, this evening we are here to uh, recognize the folks that participated in the parade and then were selected by the Lions Club uh, for our judges. And again, thank you to the Rotary Club for helping with the lineup. Uh, we have some awards to hand out. I do not believe anyone's here just because of the rescheduled dates. Um, but the Lions Club choice uh, went to our Grand Marshal Don Blankenberg. Uh, the most creative went to Rave Dance Company. Uh, the best business went to Corel Family Costumes. Most use of red and green went to Allure Dance Creation. And a crowd favorite, Roar Taekwondo, took home best youth. Uh, again, the, the parade is, is, uh, is really fun because the, the entire community comes together. And I saw you point over my shoulder. I believe Rave Dance is here. Oh, perfect. Well, that'll work. Well, I'll step out and grab her award, and uh, we'll take some pictures outside. So I appreciate that. But uh, that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions about the parade. Now, who's here? Uh, I'm Rave sorry. Rave dance. Okay. The, what dance? Rave. Rave. Rave dance. Well, congratulations. Do, do, do we not have an award? To we do. I have it in the. I didn't think anyone was going to be here, so I didn't bring him in. But uh, I'll meet him outside, and we'll, we'll hand out the award and take a picture. Well, no offense, but would you mind to go get the? Yeah, we'll, absolutely. We'll come Give back me ten and seconds, it, and then we'll, we'll, I want to get them their picture in here today. So, thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah. And I, I think they've won before. I believe. I think that they're a. a Multiple winner. I'm pretty sure I've seen that name before. Oh, have you? I think. Oh. <laughs> we compete as well. That'd be something if if uh, Hayden really didn't have the uh, on his day. Here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> oh, he does have it. There he does. There he does. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. There we go. Sorry about oh, thank that. Thank you. Uh, that was a sad Anyone want to join? Yeah, I think I'll um, do what you call it, photo bomb. Yeah, why don't you? You're not going to get in the picture? I'm not getting in there. Oh, come on. I said you were the great dancer out there. It brings us to public comments. Uh, by addressing council, you acknowledge you have read the town's public comment rules <coughs> and will abide by them. Um, Mr. Gary Sides, come on up. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> there is actually another event which involves three of the schools here in the town of Indian Trail happening in January. The uh, Franklin Covey Leader and Me program, is a, it's an international program, which is based on a specific curriculum uh, involving leadership, planning, organization, and students collaborating in small groups uh, to achieve their academic goals. Ten of our Union County Public Schools participate in the Leader and Me program. On January 31st and February 1st, 
Franklin Covey is hosting a national leadership conference in Charlotte, which will have over a thousand attendees from all over the Southeast. I've had the opportunity some years ago to attend uh, one of the conferences, and it is quite an event. The symposium is to allow uh, both members of Leader and Me and schools that are investigating the program to network and facilitating learning experiences for the schools and the educators, and it enables uh, members that are involved in the program to share insights, best practices, and uh, learn from other schools as they've implemented the program. On page on day two of the event actually involves site visits to Leader and Me schools. Indian Trail Elementary and Shiloh Valley Primary and Elementary have been chosen as three site schools. We will have, we will be invaded from folks all over coming to visit the schools and watch the students in action. Uh, Indian Trail Elementary was actually the first Leader in Me school. It was organized some years back by then Principal Candace Boatwright and has progressed to the lighthouse status, which is the highest designation for a Leader in Me school. We actually have four Leader in Me schools within the town of Indian Trail. Besides Indian Trail Elementary, Shiloh Valley Primary and Elementary, uh, Sun Valley Middle School is also a lighthouse Leader in Me school. So this is a very prestigious event. Union County Public Schools is very proud to host this event, and we are a very strong supporter of the Leader in Me program. In the spring, March or April, they haven't been scheduled yet. Each Leader in Me school will ha hold a leadership day. And if you have not had the opportunity to attend, I'm going to make sure you're invited because that is a very special day of programs actually run by the students themselves and inclu includes tours of the classrooms to see the curriculum in action. So I want to encourage you, if your schedules permit, to visit a leadership day at Indian Trail Elementary or one of our other schools. Thank you very much. You. Before you sit Sir. down, I'd like to ask, anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Carl? Can you make sure we get an email on the date and everything? Yes, sir. Yeah. As soon as it's set, I will make sure you get a individual personal invites. Um, and on a personal note, I wanted to commend your Crooked Creek Park. It, uh, I live in Monroe, but on that end of Monroe, and my son and I utilize it, just started utilizing, he, he got into a, a running thing, and so he dragged me along, but I'm walking, I'm not running. But that is a beautiful facility. Uh, I want to commend the town for having the foresight to invest in, in such a fine park. Um, I, I, I'm really impressed. I can, I can only imagine the activity when there are games in, in action and uh, everybody's during the summer, I, the, the little workout area. And I'm even going to bring our little dog to the dog park. So I wanted to just, on a side note, commend the town for uh, your investment in that, in that park. Gary, and, and um, I'd, I'd like to uh, just say a couple of words about you. Um, uh, thank you for the park, because I'm very partial to parks. Uh, I think everybody here knows that. But um, one thing about Gary, and I want to say this about Gary, is I've run into him at different school functions. Uh, last year, was it? Well, it's been over a year, maybe, when, uh, when Sun Valley was playing in their volleyball and. Uh, <sighs> They were playing for the state. They actually played for the state championship and did yes. well. And I was going to the games, and I saw Gary there, and I kept mentioning, hey, buddy, and we'd talk. And I've seen him in about every um, function there is for a school. And uh, the, what, you, you, you put your money where your mouth is, and that's, well, what I, that's what I really admire. I admire you for what you do because – you're not on the school board just to say you're on the school board. You're one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. Well, and, thank you, man. Uh, uh, just wanted to say that he drove the school bus to Raleigh <laughs> when they played for the state championship in Raleigh. And, and uh, that, I just found that amazing. I thought, what, what, what a great guy to, to uh, 
to want to drive the school bus. I, unfortunately, we finished second in the state and, and didn't didn't win it. But I wanted to thank you for it for your uh, for how much effort you put in to the schools. Well, thank you. It is a, a true. I am blessed to serve such a fine school system. Both my late parents were educators and two of my three sisters were educators. And so I ended up on the school board because I, I couldn't get a real job as an educator. So I ended up this way. But it is, we are blessed with a, uh, a great board, a great school system, our staff and educators, and our superintendent. We are, just, we are very blessed here in Union County and interactions I have with other districts just supports that even more. So I want to thank uh, the town for its support of our schools as well. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming up Thank and speaking. Uh, next, uh, before you come up, Andy, I'd like to. Andy is our new police chief, Andy Moss. Uh, Andy uh, just became, actually, are you officially? I thought it was going to be February 1st, but. It, yes, it is. It's officially pay scale official. Get the. <laughs> <laughs> yes, February 1st. Well, I'm going to just tell you how happy we are to have you. And, uh, you, you know, if when you come up, are you gonna you're gonna give us a law? You come up and give us a law enforcement. I can. Okay, if you would, tell us uh, when you come up a little bit about yourself first, if you would, because I know you, you uh, have an impressive. Uh, to me, it's impressive. Okay, so come on up. Well, good afternoon. Um, so I met pretty much all of you. Um, um, and uh, like I said, I've been up here in Indian Trail as uh, this, well, it was just February would be my first full year um, as the, uh, one of the lieutenants here, um, taking over as, uh, on, you know, as captain uh, February 1. A um, little bit about me, um, been at the sheriff's office uh, July 7th of 99 was my official hire date, so I've been there my entire career. Um, from Union County, born and raised. Um, Law enforcement in Union County for, for years, my, I kind of followed in my uh, grandfather's footsteps. He was an actual constable of Jackson Township before they had the Waxhaw Police Department. So kind of followed in his footsteps, but um, been uh, worked in the jail, worked on patrol, worked um, and, and uh, was a SRO at Forest Hills High School for several years. Actually, yeah. Mr. Sides doesn't remember me, but I've been at several of those long time uh, school board meetings from way back in the day when everybody wanted to get up and, and not behave themselves but um we got through all that so we'll be all right um but uh, yeah so i was a uh, school resource officer for several years um worked in investigations for several years had had the opportunity to do quite a bit during my uh, tenure there at the office and uh sheriff saw fit to uh, put me up here in indian trail and i have thoroughly enjoyed it um still have quite a bit to learn but um we're going to jump in with both feet and one of my favorite sayings always and kind of one of my mottos is, does anybody, anybody ever watch the um, Andy Griffith show? You remember when the Darlings came to town? And they, they got ran out of every place that they ever tried to play because of the noise ordinance, right? So the last scene in that show is they're all sitting in the jail and the sheriff's playing the guitar with them. And he says, Mr. Darling, what key y'all in? He said, Sheriff, it don't matter. Just jump in wherever you can and hang on. So that's my motto for as long as they let me stay up here in Indian Trail. We're just going to jump in where we can and hang on and do the best we can. Um, looking forward to, I know, uh, Mayor, you and I have met um, previously and uh, looking forward to uh, just seeing how can we grow together. So. Well, thank you, Andy. And I wanted you to do that because I knew you were a Union County guy and you'd been there all your life. We're lucky to have you. And we're, we're, we're with that being said... Um, and I didn't tell you about any of this before you got up there. So if you want to take me outside. No, I, I just, I just, I just right listen, I appreciate you telling uh, stories. I'm good. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. but no, just real quick. Um, I have, uh, I actually printed you guys off, um, the report. I know this is what captain hunky has given you guys in the past. It's a monthly report. Um, the chief and I are actually working on some, um, kind of a, a wrap up year in 2023, um, kind of summary um, slideshow presentation to give you guys that'll be coming up um, here in the next little while but um, as far as the uh, you can you we haven't had a chance to sit down and, and see you know kind of what do you guys want from us as far as a monthly report so this is what kind of what you've been given um, and it's a breakdown of of the reported crimes for from uh, December of 23 so it's uh, things are going well we are uh, 
progressing right along and going to keep pushing forward. Do you guys have any questions for me? Any questions for Andy? Just glad to have you, sir. Glad, glad to be here. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Clarence? Comment. Um, Congratulations, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. And uh, I will not hold it against you that you went to Parkwood. And that we <laughs> Everybody's got to be from somewhere. <laughs> might have played against each other in football we, back in the day. Yeah, maybe. So, but <laughs> congratulations. Yes, sir. I'm happy for you. I, I, just to my recollection, I know Parkwood didn't win too many games when I was playing, but we did beat Sun Valley my senior year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. You didn't have to say that part. But <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, Andy. All right, that brings us to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion for the consent agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Unanimous. Brings us up to public hearings. Uh, Ms. Brandy, if you would come up uh, by addressing council. Uh, you know, you read the town's public comment rules and we'll abide by them. I don't think we have anybody. Um, this is for ZM 2023-0137 Yelts Road, Lot 5, rezoning. Ms. Dees. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Um, tonight we have two public hearings, the first of which, as the Mayor just said, was Yonts Road, Lot 5. This is a conventional rezoning, so no site plan. Um, we don't get to craft up a bunch of conditions that the applicant has to agree to, just a, a regular rezoning for you to consider. So what we're looking at is it's one very small parcel um, in Rosemary Park. Lot number five on Yonts Road, it's between Brown Lane and Woodhaven Lane, and um, it's about 2.5 acres that is currently vacant. Um, the intent of this rezoning, initially when we talked to the owners, they would like to develop a small office building for their business. Um, their main trade is refurbishing tennis courts. However, looking at the size of the lot, by the time you, you know, put in parking and lighting and landscaping and buffers, um, we really don't feel that the lot's large enough for that, so they would have to acquire additional property. Um, they understood that, but they still want to pursue. Um, if they're not able to do that, then they want to um, market and sell the property. So... And here is an aerial view for you with the property highlighted in red. So if you're not familiar with Yonts Road, it's the road that runs behind Walmart. Um, and here's street view. The property is on the right. Here's a, another view of it from the left. And then a we're going to give a couple of photos just to kind of, if you're not familiar with the area, to kind of really show you that it's, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. Um, you've got this unit. You've got these two units. Um, this one's fairly new. Um, the older one on the right. Um, you'll notice the, the lot size is a lot larger than the lot we're considering. That is because this area does not have sewer infrastructure. And then here's two structures as well. And then here's your zoning. So you see um, quite a bit of um, SF1 single family. And then um, in June of last year, this uh, the board approved rezoning um, to GBD. So this is the area that we really um, looked at and said, okay, these small lots don't work without the infrastructure. And um, there was one developer that owned quite a bit and said, I would like to do light industrial. Old Hickory is nearby. So we're really taking a look at this area and, and perhaps changing the vision of, of what this area is going to be. And um, this, this parcel tonight goes along with that previous request. You see the future land use map here before you. Then a little bit um, more on the analysis and details. So um, again, residential development as it is zoned today, um, you've got sewers not an option. Most of the lots, and this lot in fact, um, failed the perk test um, for the soils. And um, the small lots don't, you know, even if it perked, it, it probably wouldn't be large enough to um, account for um, a septic tank. Commercial growth, um, you know, or again, that, that rezoning from last year, you've got the school over there, and then you've got Trails Dynasty mini golf as well. So you, you've got some commercial going on in that area. 
So the comprehensive plan, um, we talked about this last um, June, the future land use um, recommendations, we really feel like that we probably in our next update need to reevaluate re this area. Um, one of the key details is that the comp plan does talk about um, this area is expected to become a sub-regional activity center, um, and this area of the 74 corridor um, is currently suburban in character, but we anticipate for it to become more urban, so that helps um, support this request. It also calls for Yonts Road to become a four-lane activity center boulevard. Now, that, that's a ways off. It's not anywhere in the plans. Um, that's kind of um, long-range plans, but um, you can see that that road is much busier. Um, I will confess with the super street, I often use it as a cut through rather than having to navigate back to 74. Here is the 74 West Corridor plan, just showing that that anticipated four, four lane thoroughfare at some point in the future. And then finally, um, the requested zoning is for general business district, which is consistent with that previous request from last year. Residential development's challenging. We do see commercial growth existing already. Um, and then again, the, the road improvements eventually to come for Yonts Road um, reduce the, the residential appeal. Um, on November the 21st of last year, Planning Board voted to recommend approval of this request, and uh, we do feel that it's reasonable and consistent. So our consistency statement, this proposed rezoning is reasonable and in the public interest because it promotes the goals of the Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan in the areas of infrastructure goal number one and economic development goal number one by a balanced tax base and promoting a diverse local economy. The requested action is before you tonight, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Brandy. Um, I'm assuming <clears throat> there is no uh, applicant presentation. I mean, um, there's nobody no, here. No applicant presentation, correct. Okay, and there is no one on the uh, to to speak. Nobody's here to speak. So I'd like to, uh, if I may, open and close public hearing. Yeah. Is this a property that they already bought? And they Dennis. Yes. Dennis, can we? Go, we'll, we'll answer. We'll ask questions, okay. but. We have, somebody will give me a motion to. to I'm sorry. And then, yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion to open and close public hearing. Public okay, hearing. all in favor? Unanimous. Okay, now, Dennis, go ahead. Is this a property that they've already bought? Yes, they they've it? already acquired the property. So they bought it before they came in to head. Yes, and that, that's not unusual for Rosemary Park. Um, you know, the lots are, are fairly inexpensive, and people will dive in and, and purchase it without doing their due diligence, unfortunately. And no sewer, and yeah. Mm. But they do have the potential for the, the rezoning from last year that that owner could acquire it for, you know, additional open space to meet some of their requirements and, and help in their development, so. I got you. Any, Todd? I don't have a question. No? Are you ready Anybody else? Okay, if there's no, no council deliberation, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve ZM 2023-0137 Yonts Road, Lot 5, rezoning as presented. All in favor? Unanimous. <clears throat> All right, it brings us down to the consistency findings. Okay, I make a motion to adopt the consistency findings as read into the record by staff for ZM 2023-0137. All in favor? Unanimous. All right, Brandy, go on to the, the next one, please. All right, thank you, sir. Um, our next public hearing for tonight is CZ 2023-0132 AxiFlow Technologies. This is a conditional rezoning. Um, so you will see uh, conditions attached to this approval. So we're looking at uh, one parcel here as well. It's 1.91 acres. They are requesting to go from um, CZ GBD to CZ Light Industrial. Um, and the request, uh, the requested rezoning, this is actually within the old Hickory Business Park. Uh, but for whatever reason, this one parcel years ago got colored on the map red instead of purple. 
and um, they are looking to develop it and realize that they are somewhat restricted in the permitted uses that general business would allow versus light industrial. So um, we're just really lining it up with um, the existing zoning in the area, but because it's a part of Old Hickory and that was a um, specific approval, that's why you see it as a CZ. We want to keep that Old Hickory standards attached to it. Um, and again, the applicant is um, AxiFlow Technologies. So here's the parcel um, right on the corner of Indian Trail Fairview and Stinson Hardest. Here's the street view. The opposite direction, properties on the right. This is looking um, the left side. So there you see the, the entrance to Old Hickory. And then another shot, properties on the right side. Here's an aerial. So you can see that existing light, light industrial around it. And then here you can see the, the purple versus the, the bluish color and um, the hatched areas. So everything that's hatched just lets you know that there's a CZ or some type of special approval on it. Future land use calls this out uh, to be consistent with Old Hickory. And then a little bit more of the details. Um, you can see the adjacent properties. You've got um, light industrial and then one uh, general business district zoned property over to the east. Um, future land use recommends office, which is consistent with Old Hickory. Um, it also mentions this area is planned as a regional employment center. Um, and you can see that's played out well um, within the Old Hickory corridor. Um, and then future development in the area, you know, Old Hickory, we're very blessed that Old Hickory has just about built out, so there's just only a few remaining parcels there. Um, on November 21st of 2023, Planning Board voted to recommend approval of this request. So our consistency statement for this project, this proposed rezoning is reasonable and is in the public interest because it promotes the goals of the Indian Trail Con Comprehensive Plan in the areas of land use and housing goal number one, where it avoids potential land conflicts, and then economic development goal number one with a balanced tax base and promoting a diverse local economy. You have your requested action before you tonight, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Brandy. Uh, again, we don't have uh, an applicant here for a presentation. Not oh, we do. No. We, we do. Okay. Applicants here, um, no presentation, but they're no here. Presentation. But they're here for questions. Just here in case someone else. Okay. Correct. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, all right. We do have we have no one for uh, public hearing. So again, I'd like to open and close public hearing and get a motion. Yes. I make a motion to open and close public hearing. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, council, uh, do you have any questions or uh, anything on it? If not, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion. I'd like to, to uh, make a motion to approve CZ 2023-0132 Axiflow Technologies as presented. And uh, uh, motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Motion to, uh, to uh, adopt the statement of consistency is written to the record by staff for CZ 2023-0132. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Brandy, sir. thank you. Brings us to old business, uh, an ARPA update, Mr. McLam. Good evening, Mayor and Council. How are y'all doing? It seems like it's been forever since I've gotten up here and done one of these, but uh, we'll run through this really quick. Um, we just started back up this week, having our, uh, we're going to do them bi-weekly for a little bit here, our ARPA meetings of our internal group. Uh, we talked through a little bit of the ARPA funding that's still available, um, mainly for stormwater uses. Todd's actively working through some of the projects that had already been approved by council for those, stor for those uh, stormwater projects. And then we're going to see what's left. So we'll be bringing back potentially some new stuff um, for y'all to approve in the next couple of months. 
Um, now that we get down and start looking at ARPA enabled funds, so remember that it's those funds that were freed up for lack of a better term because of the ARPA funds being used to pay for other things. Um, a little bit of an update on the funds that were from FY23. Um, two of the three fire trucks are supposed to be here uh, probably in the next 15 to 20 days. Um, and then the last one will be about another 60 days. Um, and then all three of those will be here. Um, Emerald Woods Waterline Project is running about two months behind schedule right now. They are in their easement acquisition phase. Um, if y'all remember, that's kind of on the north side of town, uh, helping some of those residents over there. Um, they hope that they'll be able to speed up the process now that they are actually in that easement acquisition phase, be able to get it into construction and, and get it caught back up on their schedule. Uh, we have delivered um, Food for Families, Common Heart, and Cameron's House of Hope, their vehicles that were surplused. Um, so all of them have their vehicles now, and they're in... Uh, going to be using those. Uh, if we look at FY24 surplus funds, so that's the ones we're, we're working through right now, um, out of everything that council approved uh, for um, different projects, we have been actively uh, here in the office um, purchasing items, surplusing those out earlier tonight on the consent agenda. Y'all approved 16 resolutions for surplus. So that's part of those funds, trying to get uh, those projects and all those things out. Um, <coughs> would like to draw your attention to um, the Moore Park Waterline Extension Project. So that project, if you remember, we reached out to the county to see if they would uh, partner with us again for a 50-50 partnership, kind of like what we are doing in Emerald Woods. We have yet to hear back from them. Uh, they've yet to take it to the commissioners to decide where they're going to fund that, how they're going to fund that project, and bring that back to us. Um, council approved in our list of projects this year what would be our 50 percent of the design work and that's all that was approved by council so that's kind of we're just waiting to hear back from the county about how they want to do that um, so now let's talk about fy25 i know it may seem early for y'all to talk about fy25 for surplus funds um, but we are going to, as a committee, look to come back at the next uh, council meeting and open up a call for projects. Um, and that will be for um, FY25. Like I said, we'd look to maybe look at um, a February 14th through May 14th uh, for the window for projects to be submitted. Internal review happening in May. Come back to council in June timeframe for approval of projects so that we could start actively working through those projects in July and August and throughout next fiscal year. So that's kind of where we are with everything. Um, any questions? Todd? That might be for you also, but uh, at the stormwater committee, the uh, watershed study is complete and they, they gave a I guess partial presentation. Um, since that's going to be part of ARPA funds, maybe surplus funds. Do you know when when we have it scheduled to present here? I think we have it scheduled for February. Is that right? Yeah, next meeting. The next meeting. It's next scheduled meeting. for presentation. Okay. All right. So yeah. So we we're all going to match that together then. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you. And any um, other questions, Mike? Mr. Mayor. Some information we got, and Adam doesn't know this, but some information we got from the county today, and I apologize, Adam, is that Moores Park, they have introduced it to their county commissioners, and they're waiting to try to see if they can get it in their CIP. Uh, so we're following up with them probably once every two weeks to find out where they are. Okay, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call, too. I'll, I'll see, see if we can expedite that a little bit uh, and get them to at least think about us. So uh, anyway. See, things okay. change so fast. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank All you. Right. Uh, Let me know uh, if y'all need anything. Thanks. Mr. Hunsinger, uh, Indian Trail Complete Street update.
<clears throat> Mr. Todd Hunsinger, come on up. All right, I got one more thing to do. <laughs> Todd, is there anything I can help you with? Or, or <laughs> I'm serious if I could. All right, y'all are not missing anything. This is just a timeline. I thought, <laughs> thought it would be helpful for the councils to see while I'm going through the, uh, the history of this project. I apologize, but the plotter plot won't, uh, unfortunately, won't make any dark. A little too light for me, but and it's a little hurt y'all to see it. But hopefully, uh, y'all can see that. All right. So uh, I wanted to uh, basically start from scratch to update, but uh, especially for Clarence because he's not really been. Uh, I mean, he's been at council meetings. I'm sure he's paid attention, but again, it's nice to do a refresher and let y'all know why why it's taking so long to do what we've got to do out there, right? So what we do is we'll go over a little bit of the history, then we'll talk about the county's sewer and water upgrades we were working with them about, right away acquisition update, underground utilities, and then pretty much moving forward from there, and then uh, just a project budget, which is basically your CIP ordinance, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about our public meeting last, uh, last week uh, for our phase two project. All right, when you start a project this way and you're, you're trying to go after federal dollars, it's a very good practice to do a study <clears throat> because, again, DOT doesn't know, um, doesn't keep up with all the streets as far as traffic concerns, as, as far as things that may be going wrong out there. So uh, basically, you, you do a study and you try to get that project pretty much on their radar. Well, the town two directors ago decided to do a study back in March 2016. And that study uh, basically was to, to make the downtown Complete Street project basically pedestrian friendly. I mean, that's all it was. I mean, we wasn't trying to do improvements, traffic improvements or anything else. It's just get people to be able to safely walk the streets on both sides of the road, make it curb and gutter, all that good stuff. Well, so that so that project basically looked like this, and I know it's hard to see, <clears throat> but basically you had 10-foot sidewalks uh, on both sides and just two lanes of traffic just like you got now. Uh, but you also, based on the downtown uh, cor uh, comprehensive plan, you uh, had to put in planters, uh, some pavers, stuff like that. Well, that cross-section you see right there, <clears throat> that's basically a DOT street. I mean, you would have had to put the uh, the five to six foot planting strip, sidewalks back. Well, that's right there. It's about 58 and a half feet of right of way right there that you would have had to build. And you're basically you're not doing any transportation improvements. You're just trying to make a friendly walking road. Well, <clears throat> as far as our project, our new project, we're asking only a foot and a half more right away, and we can actually stick a turn lane in there anywhere we want. And we still got the 10-foot sidewalks on both sides. Um, and, and that's one reason why we told, told y'all and y'all approved to take, take another street, is we can build this road in a safe manner and be able to get what we need and still not impact these businesses along this corridor. So that's what we did. And so back in 2017, we took this, again, uh, one director behind me, took this to CRTPO, which is our, um, our uh, agency that uh, the mayor and I attend the meetings. Uh, basically, they're there to basically distribute dollars, federal dollars, to the towns and cities in conjunction with DOT, which plays the middleman between us and the feds. So we took this out to try to get uh, federal dollars for in 2017, and it was accepted. And basically, it takes about a year, and that agreement was, was signed in February 2018. So 
so that project ended up being uh, basically this project because again we were just pursuing the pedestrian friendly but what we did was at the time it was decided just to do five foot sidewalk on one side and just 10 foot on the other to again to squeeze the right of way in as much as possible not to impact uh, the businesses so around that time we had the 2018 agreement signed by DOT the town center decided well we we want to start our project now so they came to us around that time around the year 2018 and basically decided they wanted to move forward you see that on the timeline so <clears throat> so what we did and obviously this image here is basically what our project is right now y'all have seen this this is the public meeting i just wanted to show it one more time so so it was approved 2006 so this is your layout for the town center i mean this is what they're going to build um, they're trying to move for the townhomes, which is on the right-hand side of the image, townhomes, and then they're going to have commercial going all the way up to the roundabout, which they actually show the roundabout right here that we have to build for our project, with our project, using their funds. So they decided, okay, well, we want to start uh, looking at this. So again, well, it's 06, so we have to do an impact, a traffic impact study, an uh, updated one. So that process started around June, again, a couple of months of just talking back and forth with the town. It didn't really start scoping until June of 2018. Well, by that time, again, we, don't, we didn't know if they were still moving forward or not, so we, we kept going with our project, which was surveying. Surveying started around the, uh, June of 2018, the same, around the same time scoping started. Well, um, that kind of moved forward and you can see the timeline here you've seen this before in other presentation uh, presentations is basically the scoping begins 2018 <clears throat> i mean and then basically it took over two years almost two years to get a tia uh, pretty much approved by dot again we hadn't took the street over so they had all the they had all the power on that road we didn't so we had to just basically put, put pretty much put the the, the design on hold well we didn't start thinking about that till November 2019 well lo and behold we, before that as you can see on the timeline in October I get a phone call from the engineer over at Atrium saying uh we got impacts to your any intro road all right so we're, we've got a TIA we're waiting on with the town center so we move and then we got Atrium sitting there telling us, okay, well, we got impacts as well. So, again, the next month later, boom, everything's put on hold. I mean, we've already started the design. Um, but, again, we got about 25% into it uh, and stopped. So then Atrium basically submits their memo to us about a month later. And, of course, it has impacts to two legs of that main, our downtown intersection. So, basically, I initiate an email to, to, to Stalins basically saying, okay, look, you know uh we got to do something here because again as you see on this picture of atrium you know this is only phase one that just got built i don't know if people don't uh, understand this but there's actually two more phases and you can see them in the bare lots of, around surrounding that structure that's two more phases that's four four five six how many buildings i don't know but four big parcels that need to be phased in well their tia that they did is phased so the improvements they've done out there on stars right now is only phase one well they phase two and phase three actually impacts us so i was at the opinion look we're not going to wait <laughs> it's a 10-year project uh and it could be more than that we're not going to wait for them to sit there and build out the project and impact us our intersection and and basically put the project on hold which is what we would have had done with town center too because that's phase that's a 10-year build out and that tia is phased as well so again they wouldn't have to do any intersection improvements on the downtown intersection of matthews and intro road until later down the road and it could have been four or five years could have been sick so again i came down to council back to council did some presentations and basically said look you know council we can do this we can we either put this project on hold, let these developments built out in the next 10 years, and then we'll come back and put our improvements after the fact. Or we can sit there, rip the Band-Aid off, 
take these impacts with us and, and combine it all into th all three, basically three projects and combine them into one and get this thing done um, construction-wise in a year and a half, two years, once, once construction starts. So the council wasn't you know, agreeable that, you know, that, that would be um, the best scenario. So we went back to Stalin's and we talked to Atrium and said, look, you know, this is what we'd like to do, you know, but we need the funds now. We don't need the funds later. We, we can't wait five, six down, years down the road when you're ready to start phase two just to get the funds. So they agreed, go ahead and give us the funds now. And, of course, the town center agreed to do theirs, their part. And so... We finally got those two TIAs, right? So now it's now we've creeped, we have creeped from putting the project on hold in November 2019 to basically um, looking at these two, uh, t two TIAs in March of 2020. <clears throat> so again, you, you basically have lost uh, pretty much over two years on this project of not being able to do much of nothing. So. Uh, we we uh, uh, contracted out a small contract for our uh, uh, consultant to look at those two TIAs to make sure when you put those two together, they match up and everything. Once we decide to start doing the design and implement these together to move forward, it would be a cohesive design. And so we did that. Everything looked good. So we decided, okay, now we're going to go and uh, try to get some more additional co uh, funds from CRTPO. Well, that's what we did. We went back. Uh, went back and got additional funds for the project. This took a lot of coordination with DOT because they, they, they couldn't sit there and put this project, those additional improvements into our project, so we ended up having two different projects. That was a whole, <laughs> whole thing about another year of going back and forth with them, and finally we've got the, both projects put together with one uh, project number. Well, while all that's going on, you're, all right, now you're at March 2021. I've took a look at the Union County C, C, uh, CIP and noticed that, okay, well, they've got a CIP uh, to basically do sewer improvements and water improvements in the downtown area in 2028. Well, no, we're not going to wait to 2028. So I start engaging with the county, the county. So I'm sitting there having conversations and going back and forth for months. Finally convinced them, okay, look, you know, y'all got to find the dollars to get this thing done now because we want to build it now. We don't want y'all to come back, cut the road open, to put sewer improvements along that sewer main that runs in the middle of any trail road. <clears throat> so we moved forward on March 21, got that done. So we stepped forward. So now we sit there and we get we get them on board. We get the additional funds from CRTPO. <clears throat> we go in there. Now we already had stakeholder meetings with all these business owners, every one of them. Talked to them about our project. Remember the first project, the pedestrian friendly project. So they already aware of that. Well, we of course we got to go back to them because now we have impacted them more with combining all these improvements. So we start that process in April of 2021. All right, and so while that's going on, CRTPO, we're working with them. It takes about a year. We finally get that agreement in place in June 2021, and we actually then basically update our CIP ordinance to implement those funds. And so we went from a $3.8 million project morphed into pretty much a, over a $6 million project at the, at the time. All right, so uh, let me get my time timeline here so uh, around that time we're doing an RFQ the whole period trying to get funds doing stakeholder meetings trying to get a design team together well we finally get the design team together and that was actually March around that March 2021 time frame while we're starting to pursue the funding trying to get those on board so then we start doing the design and in a few months into it of course we figured out okay well uh, the roundabout's not going to work in front of the pharmacy because we're going to impact Steps Academy. So we come to y'all, come back and say, okay, look, we're going to have to build a fourth leg of this roundabout because we have impacts. 
Um, the roundabout has to be the size it has to be. Granted, we shrunk it as best we could, but we had to have another project. So I came back to y'all and said, look, we, we just need to extend this. We're calling it Navajo Trail Extension right now, but it obviously can be called something different. Well, we do that September 21, basically that gets approved. Um, between getting the funds in June and work, and going through the months of talking to y'all, we get that project approved. And then we work, start working with DOT about getting the, the street takeover. And of course, that takes time as well. So we finally get that done, take over the road, February 2022. So again, moving along, but at a slow pace. All right, then we go public meeting. We finally get enough design to be able to present it to the, the, to the, um, to the public. We've uh, engaged y'all with, you know, talk start at that same time frame. We started talking to y'all about the Duke Energy uh, power pole situation if we want to do aerial underground. So we have the public meeting. Um, we go through it. Uh, let's see here. And then uh, going back to the atrium, so as you can see on this slide, so we've engaged them. I sent that email in January 2020. <laughs> it took all the way, all way to August 2022 to get an actual local, interlocal agreement. And that was not Stalin's fault. That was atrium's fault. But again, you're dealing with the hospital. Time goes by slow with them. And so finally get that done, executed in August of 2022. Survey begins Navajo Trail September 2022. Um, November of November 2022. After that, Town Center Impact Agreement. We finally get an agreement with them to be able to get funds from them. And so, as you can see on the screen, so we get a design contract. Now that's date thrown. That's actually uh, March March 2021. We get that lab agreement I told you about in June 2021. Contact stakeholders, get the project going. All right, so then the other items start coming in. All right, so we've got takeover, we got a public meeting, like I've said, Navajo, interlocal agreement, then you got the survey, town center agreement, then the complete street design is completed in March 2023. And then we go from March 2023 to basically getting any NCDOT right away plan approval, which takes a few months. Um, to June 2023. So um, by that time, we're still working with Duke Energy trying to figure out the underground. And then working with y'all to try to figure out, okay, y'all decide, okay, we want to do it underground, how we're going to fund it. So we worked through that process and finally funding gets approved in August of 2023. So two, two big delays on this project. You got the TIA that took almost two years You've got trying to get funding, which took over a year. So you've got three years. Well, basically, this project more or less sitting idle uh, just because two developments decide that, you know, they want to be around town, which, we, which are good developments to have. Um, but that's just the way things go sometimes. And so now where we're at is, Again, we've got the design done, got Duke Energy squared away, so we went to right away acquisition. So we started that in June of 2023. <clears throat> and then notice to proceed that same month, project scopes 51 parcels. We have 34 appraisals completed, which is some of them are obviously multiple tracks, uh, as you probably know. And then uh, for, we have 40 offers out of the 51. It's actually been submitted out. Now, to some of those folks are are going to come back with counter offers. They're going to get attorneys, uh, attorneys involved. I've, what I've heard is it's not a, a terrible, uh, not a lot of the 40 offers. Most of them are, are, are in per basically a verbally agreement to, to take the offer, but some, you know, obviously want to think it over, talk to people, who, you know, I don't know how long that's going to take. Um, some's going to get their uh, competing appraisals. And so, I don't know how long that's going to take, but the good thing is we've got the offers out. We only got a handful of uh, appraisals waiting, and that's just because of the situation with Navajo and the roundabout in our project because you're dealing with multiple owners on two different projects pretty much. And so Rightway Consultants got that. He's starting to engage those folks now. Um, 
And that's basically where we're at with right away. Uh, so now, talking about the county and the water and sewer. So, so if, I don't know if y'all know or not, but basically that CIP I talked about. So they found funding, uh, and basically these people have existing gray water systems uh, around in their yards, and basically they want to take those offline, and basically give them basically the basic service of sewer like anybody else has a four inch clean out, you know, uh, sanitary sewer line to your house and take these offline. So a major part of that is that. Now there are going to be some water main upgrades that the county wants to do that are fairly, fairly small. But we also have in, uh, water and sewer that we've got to do because we don't want to put sewer outside of the road. We want the sewer in the road. I mean, again, we're trying to minimize right-of-way impacts with these business owners. So we've got to put sewer down Unionville and Trail Road. And we also have got to put some water main adjustments because some of our storm, water, uh, storm sewer design is obviously impacts some of that. So we've got to move a little bit of water mains and stuff to get make everything work. Again, you've got underground Duke Energy. You've got uh, uh, storm water. You've got water. Uh, I mean, st yeah, storm water. You've got water main. You've got sewer. You've got gas. So you've got a lot of things that's trying to get in this road so we don't have to buy a right of way uh, against these folks and impact them. So it gets complicated, and I'll show you why. So this is just a map kind of showing. I know it doesn't come out great, but it's all I had. Basically, it's kind of showing the green The green uh, lines are basically the sewer. And that's kind of wrapping around Park, Navajo area, and some off of Matthews Energy Road. It's basically the major impacts. All right, so Duke Energy. So we have to put um, a concrete, basically a concrete block, <laughs> in underground and as you can see on that screen there's 15 conduits in that concrete block we, we have to put that in the ground like that and you got to put it the ground deep enough because they don't let any other utilities use those conduits so that's all just for them and they're not going to use all those conduits but they won't share so you have to put conduit on top of that for the other utilities. So we've got to put this in the ground deep enough to where we can put some cover over it, then put more conduits along the top of it just to get the other utilities in the ground. So again, not an easy feat, but it's going to get done. So we've been, Duke, we've got Duke's design. I mean, they were very uh, on top of things, didn't really delay us that much. It's the other utilities that are the problem, and we're trying to work through it. But everybody's busy, and a lot of people are not responsive to, to emails at times. But we're trying to get through it. But uh, all we're trying to do now is we, we know what the cost of the Duke's going to be. We're trying to get costs back, costs back from the four other utilities that's got to be in there. And what it's going to take to get that in the ground, because that's, that's on us. we got to pay for that. So um, I, as of now, we're still on budget. But I don't have calls for two other uh, two of these utilities. I don't know what they're going to be. Um, so right now, based on the the money that we have in place for this, we're good. But I don't know if it's going to get more. I don't think it is, but I don't know for sure. All right, so that's where we're at with that. So moving forward. <clears throat> All right, so you got right away acquisition again, unless these folks. Uh, uh, Delay us on competing appraisals and all that. I, don't, I think we can get all these offers done. And if they some do go legal and go to condemnation, I think that'll get processed in a timely manner uh, for that May 2024 date. Again, it may get pushed, but we're still shooting for May 2024. Okay, possible delays are we just found out that the DOT cannot approve the erosion control plans for these projects. Uh, they sent a mass email out to all the towns and cities, um, so which which is weird because they can basically approve every every other design, but and you think with federal dollars they could approve the erosion control because the DWQ is state, but for some reason it has to go to DWQ now. So my fear is a lot of these projects are going to be shoving these plants in a DWQ. Well, that ain't one corporate, you know, one office around this county. Our, our surrounding counties, that's in Morrisville. And they don't got a lot of plan reviewers. So my fear is we're going to get this thing in there and we're going to be sitting for a while. So I'm hoping that ain't the case because that's going to affect that 
construction authorization in July 2024. Because, again, I can't get authorization if I don't have a DWQ permit in place. So just keep that in mind. We already talked about the private appraisals. All right, again, if things go well, we're going to let this project advertise and everything in fall 2024. And hopefully get done in two years. That's the goal. All right, so budget-wise, this is basically on your ordinance breakdown. Uh, it's nothing you haven't seen before. That's the, that's the cost right now. Again, um, only cost we're bearing right now is pretty much uh, design, more or less. Uh, everything else is kind of take, taken care of. All right, any questions about that project? I know that was a lot of information, but I need, I need to get clearance updated, so I might as well do it here. <laughs> All right, so let's go to a public meeting. We had a public meeting last week for phase two. Again, y'all approved $700,000 to start that design, and so we've been actually doing it. We're at 25% plans. The stormwater um, design has been done. We're now we're moving to utilities. <clears throat> Let me show you some renderings, and I'll get back to the other image. All right. So we showed these at the public meeting so y'all, everybody can see in case you didn't go to the public meeting. This is the existing condition down there. School's on your left-hand side going back towards Gribble Road. This is what it's going to look like when we, we build it. So there's 10-foot sidewalks on both sides, street lights. We're going to stick the poles on the right, all on the left-hand side or northwest side of the roadway unless council decides they want to spend some more money on Duke, Duke Energy Underground. Um, but that's what it's going to look like if we keep the poles aerial. And we'll try to get, we're going to get everything on that side of the road as far as aerial is concerned. Again, we're trying to, we're trying to put a, a, a dual left turn in the middle. Again, that gives people places to turn and keeps traffic moving, which is a good thing. We're also trying to implement some landscaping, as you'll see in other pictures. All right, this is an aerial. Tr school's on your right-hand side. All right. That's a, we're trying to get these islands in there and put some landscape in there. Again, to beautify the roadway. It's also access traffic common as well um, to kind of it's kind of a view of rest restriction as far as why you're driving. I think it's a good thing. We, we can't put them everywhere because we we got to keep access to people's driveways. But we're trying to stick them as much much as we can. All right, you're at the basically the bank hardware stores on your left. Sanctuaries on your right, going towards 74. All right, that's what's going to look. Liberty Lanes on your right. Again, trying to get that middle lane all the way down. That way, people getting their drives, and everything else, don't have to sit there and st stop waiting on traffic. Well, I'm sorry, people don't have to wait for them to get to their driveways and keep can keep moving. <clears throat> it's a good picture. Is that line of traffic? That's nice, ain't it? All right, so you're, you're further, uh, I'm sorry, you're past, you're past the hardware store going, getting towards Shady Bluff. All right, and that's what it's going to look like. Again, we're just keeping the poles on the left-hand side. I know y'all can't see the poles very well, but the kind of camouflaging. But, again, they're on that side of the road. All right. Another map we, we sent out that we put, we put out there at the public meeting is this map. And I'll be honest with you, most folks that came in, they got to look at this map and they didn't want to, they didn't even want to talk about phase two. They want they want to talk about you know all these projects that are in this area. If you look at that map, on the bottom of the side, you see the legend. That's that's these are all state and town projects in the immediate area of downtown that has been going on for the last eight nine years. The first one was. As you see in the purple right here on Enitra Road, that was that bridge upgrade. And I'm sure everybody in here remembers that. They closed the road for God knows how many months and uh, to try to get that thing done. Well, that was the first thing. <clears throat> then he went in there and fixed 74, which is in the orange. And then now what we're trying to do is get the complete street done, which is in the, in the middle. That's phase one right there in the middle. All right, while that's going on, we've been talking about Chestnut Parkway for years. We finally got that bitted out. So what we got, we got two projects. So we got phase three in the light blue that hopefully is going in construction next month. 
And then we got DOT's overpass near Town Hall, right here. You seen where the woods are cleared? Well, that's that's actually got bid out. That they're going to start doing work in April. So that infrastructure, that the uh, DOT will take two years. We'll take a year and a half. And that's basically that's why I talked about these folks. When you start talking about that, that's all they want to talk about because they are tired of waiting in line on any road. They just want to. They want the traffic to move. Well, that road right there is going to move traffic. This, your the study that you approved years ago, former council approved, states that fifty percent of traffic will go on that road. Will take. Will go away from any intro road. Now DOT didn't didn't like fifty percent. They thought that was too high. So we we designed those improvements. All that those improvements that we're going to put on any trail road are actually thirty percent. So you're actually getting more improvements than you may need. But also, think about this. You're actually getting improvements in your downtown intersection with your turn lanes and stuff that we're going to put in before Atrium is impacts with Phase 2 or Phase 3 of the projects. You know, they may never come. So you're getting actually more help, more storage in your left turn lane stuff than you may need because you don't need them until that project gets fully built out. Town center the same way. I don't know how long the town center is going to take. Well, we're going to have that, these uh, improvements in the ground before it gets built out, which is a good thing. So that Chestnut Parkway is going to be done, and we're going to start building our complete street. I mean, scheduling-wise, it's actually turning out pretty well for us as a town. So we're very fortunate. And then you got Old Moore Road, which is in the blue, that's coming right behind everybody else. So by the time we get our stuff done or get close to, well, not done, we'll probably be midway in our complete street project. They're going to let that project in Old Moore Road and uh, start that. So unfortunately, a lot, of, a lot of orange barrels for the next six, eight years of your life. But it's progress. I mean, and a lot of towns can't say that around here. So that's a good thing. All right, any, any questions for me? Sorry it took so long, but... Mr. Mayor, well, may I, I have a question. Sure. I have several, but I'm... I'm we'll, we'll talk offline. So will we be alive <laughs> when, this road, when, when this road gets done, or will we be... Uh, What's uh, that? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm joking when I say oh, we'll okay. be alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, people wonder why, when we say if it takes a while when government gets a hold of doing stuff, and it's not necessarily our government. It's just the process that you have to go through to get this done, to get that done, and you depend on so many different people to do things other than what you can do, and then you end up, it takes a long time, and I look forward to, to, to it uh, getting done. I, I go back, well, no, you don't have to go back, but I saw CRTPO is putting in how much money into this? Uh, Six million? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Which yeah. I think is important for, for people to understand well, we're getting help from money from other sources. Well, that's 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 the eighty. That's the uh, I believe that's the eighty percent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's one of the reasons I guess we decided to uh, to explain to people. One of the reasons we decided to do this is because uh, the, you know the CRTPO we're going to pay for a large part of it. Correct. Right. Right. And that's and again that's. Um, the unfortunate, the backs, the 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 the, con, the pros and cons of that is basically, it takes longer. I mean, because you because the DOT has basically approved uh, four phases of the plan: the 25, the 65, the 90 percent, the 100. I mean, you, you're talking a month, month or two each each review. I mean, you're talking six months to eight months of just dead time, and it's unfortunate it's that way. But that's just the process, and you have to live with it, and that's why it takes. You feel like nothing's going to happen around here, and it's just because the, in the background you got a lot of moving parts, uh, and we're going as fast as we can. Uh, and and to get I it think done. it's important, though, that people realize that, that that is part of the process of why it takes so long. Is that we're it's not it it's our money, but it's it's not it's not coming directly from us, right? So, which is a good thing, which is, is a very good thing. And I was not here for that meeting you had the other night because I was at a at the CRTPO meeting in downtown Charlotte. Yeah. So uh, I would have liked to have been here. How, can I, how many people were here? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I meant to tell you. Uh, we had uh, 24. 24. 
four people. That's good. Yeah. And, and like I said, n no negatives are coming out of the meeting. Uh, when, when you showed them that map and they start talking about, all, I started explaining them all the improvements um, pretty much. You know, they, they're just happy to see things that are coming in the next few years. I think that's what it is. That, like you said, a lot of them are, uh, you know, are older people, and they basically are like, am I going to be able to see these improvements before I die? I mean, I've said, yeah. I heard that about five or six times. I said, well, you know, we're going as fast as we can. And, and you know, again, you're, you're, again, you're very fortunate as a town. And I told them that, and they, they well, appreciate it. And, and I appreciate the, your, the, your hard work, and yeah. I appreciate the work that the that, that, that councils have done in the past, and to get that kind of money, uh, CRTPO, uh, that, CRTPO is Charlotte Regional Transportation Planning Organization, and it's a big organization that um, uh, a, that we're a part of, um, and uh, that, that divvies out money. And uh, last year we got a, we got about a half million dollars last year from didn't we see was it last year we got CRTPO when we got the Charging stations. Yeah, 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 it's two grants: the charge station, the transportation and master plan. This is grants that the town applies for. So, uh, okay. Well, with that being said, Todd. Well, we we know phase one Indian Trail Road is funded. So, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, and as you said, there may be more costs, but and the costs may go up. I think we've already had cost increase, but like he said, we've got money from the state and different that did a lot of the paying for phase one uh, on your phase two I don't think we have but maybe two million towards that correct because so that's not close to being no no I mean that's at this point yeah and that's something we're going to discuss the budget workshop this year uh, about yeah, so I mean because I've, get, I've got a cost estimate that I'm going to have it ready for you go ahead oh I said I'm gonna have a cost estimate for for that project again we we can't have that till we do 25 percent plans and we're there so I'm hoping to present that, and then y'all, y'all as a council, will have to figure out: Do you want to keep pursuing the project or not? I mean, to be honest with you, because it is going to cost. Well, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, well, will there be a opportunity for council maybe to interject some possible design changes? Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, you know, you, I mean, for right of way acquisition on ten foot sidewalks on each side, it's going to be expensive. And I know that you had a medium. So, you know, just stuff like instead of having a medium, why not just let that go all the way down as a turn lane like you have in the other part of the road? Absolutely. You know, so, I mean, just, you know, at that point. So, anyway, do you, and you said you had a cost estimate or you said we're, you're going we're gonna to have, have a one. cost estimate at the budget workshop when that's, okay. when that, right. that ever, it's ever scheduled. I'm not sure if it's scheduled yet. Well, I appreciate that. Thank oh, you. no, no Thank problem. You. Appreciate what you do. Thank you. Well, I'm sure you'll have um, the council. You know, we don't want an incomplete street project. Right. You know what I mean? We will have to carry on and finish phase two. Yeah. So, um, and again, you can shrink that cross section however you want. Uh, my my main goal for that rest of that project would be just to try to make it more more a pedestrian friendly corridor all the way throughout. And if we we don't want the heck, if we don't want that two left turn lane in the middle, I mean. That's something to think about because, again, we're just trying to keep move, traffic moving, and that is the most desirable way without impacting more right away. So, any other questions? Thank you, Tom. All right, appreciate Mr. it. Mayor, before we move on, um, Bobby, flip that map back over that shows all of the DOT projects, if you will. I got it. Okay. I want the council to take a good long look at that. That is extremely important because one of the priorities I think for this council is to develop a downtown. And one of the things that we've talked to you about is we don't have any type of grid system or any way to get around there. So as you look at that, it's very clear. You can clearly see the perimeter. and what will happen is these road projects will get done it takes a long time it was a it was a small corridor in which to work in with indian trail road plus you had two tias plus you had the railroad to deal with and they're not the most cooperative bunch of people on the face of the earth but you're going to look back 10 years from now and say this really made sense these were some of the most important projects I worked on when I was on city council. 
Um, that's just a couple comments. The other thing I'll add, uh, state money did help out a lot on the Indian Trail Road Phase 1. We thank our delegation for that, CRTPO. But if you look at the budget that Todd presented to you a few minutes ago, out of the $14 million and some change, we've got $371,000 in local funds, which is roughly 2.6% 2, 2 of local dollars in that particular project. Go ahead. Well, it's like the mayor pointed out, and, you know, he's been here, and I've been here the last years where we've talked about this. The good thing is, like you said, it's going to get done, like Chestnut Parkway Extension. Part of that's the state, so they're going to do it. Phase 1 Indian Trail Road is funded. Now, Chestnut Parkway Extension, our side, is also funded. So these are projects the public should know that, you know, there's no additional, you know, we, we've got the money sitting there to do these. Like you said, it's come from the state, CPR toe, and, and different places, the feds. So and I just wanted to confirm that our part of those Chestnut Parkway extension was totally funded. Yeah. Correct? Yes, that's correct. And Todd and Jim are excellent in finding where we need to leverage our funds for the maximum benefit. I will remind the council that one of the things you approved as we talked about Chestnut Parkway phase three, which is ours, that council agreed to fund a temporary intersection at Old Monroe Road, right in, right out. And then when Old Monroe Road is completed, they will address that as a roundabout or full intersection or whatever the state's doing. So we didn't think it was wise to have Chestnut Parkway phase three and have the road dead end to nowhere. So I want to thank you all for that. Also remind you that the state is doing phase two. You can see their evidence of all the trees that have been removed. And they are working with CSX to build a bridge over the uh, railroad. I think we may be paying for some improvements on that project. And again, I heard that the railroad changed some of their standards. So we're letting DOT deal with that. Okay, thank y'all. That brings us up um, to uh, Melody. Melanie. Um, update on the occupancy tax. I think the manager is going to start out. Okay, go ahead, Mike. She's going to do the heavy lifting. I'm just going to give some introductory <coughs> remarks. Uh, Mr. Officer Brooks and I were in Wilmington last week, and I think one of the things he heard first out was that North Carolina is not a home rule state. And what that means is all of our powers come from the General Assembly. And for a number of years, uh, we have been trying to get an occupancy tax in Indian Trail. In fact, there had not been, as I understand, an occupancy tax bill approved in the state for the last maybe 10 years or something. And I know some of you have had some discussions with our local delegation. And this year, we got it approved, both us and Stalins, for the ability to enact an occupancy tax. But there has to be an election to make that happen. I'm just going to give you a brief history about the occupancy tax, and then Melanie is going to walk you through some of the steps. We're not asking for a decision tonight. We just want to brief you at a 50,000-foot level. We would like to schedule a workshop at some point in the near future to kind of get in the weeds a little bit to figure out, would you like to call for an election? If you would, when you would like to do that? And how do we put out communication about the election? We can't promote it. We can't work against it. We have to be very neutral in all of our communications. And as part of that, it is probably good for us to talk to some folks that have gone through this to find out some of the tips that they would recommend. The occupancy tax has been around since 1983, so it's been around a little bit more than 40 years. And it is designed to help promote tourism in North Carolina, and tourism is one of our top industries. And some of the uses of the money is it can be used for destination promotion, tourism-related expenditures, which, in, which uses and vary from festivals and events to capital projects to providing some municipal uh, services in some of the beach town, funding or debt support for tourism-related capital projects such as convention centers, arenas, or visitor attraction, um, beach re-nourishment. We don't have to worry about that here. 
and general fund revenue for other specific non-tourism uses. Like I said, when we get into a workshop, assuming y'all want to do that at some point, then we can give you some more specifics. And unless there's other questions, I'll turn it over to Melanie. Good evening. I put um, two slides in your packet just outlining the steps of this process. As the manager told you, the next step is to hold a referendum. So just because it took us 10 or 11 years to get the legislature to authorize the town the ability to levy the tax doesn't mean we can go and do that next month. Um, you all would need to make a motion to direct the County Board of Elections to conduct an advisory referendum on the issue as to whether or not the public wants to collect an occupancy tax. All it takes is a majority. Um, once you have a majority that say yes, you may, the tax may be up to 5% of the gross receipts. Um, then the next step is you all have to adopt a resolution after providing 10 days public notice in the newspaper, um, having a public hearing. And then in addition to that, you also have to create a Indian Trail Tourism Development Authority. Because the Tourism Development Authority um, is the agency that is going to distribute the funds um, and determine how, how the proceeds are going to be used. When you create the tourism authority, two-thirds, as the manager said, two-thirds of the funds must be used to promote travel and tourism and the remainder for tourism-related expenditures in Indian Trail. So this isn't a situation where you can um, levy the tax just to put in the general fund or to you know put for staff salaries or anything like that. It has to be directly related to tourism. Um, the authority shall consist of one third of the members must be affiliated with businesses that collect the tax in the town. So I would think employees, you know, of the hotels, managers, owners of the hotel um, would be would be good to have on um, the authority. And then one half of the members shall be individuals who are active in the promotion of travel and tourism in the town. Um, the, our finance officer shall be the ex officio financer finance officer for the authority. He doesn't, he doesn't have a choice. Um, the, the statute says that he shall be it. And then the town council must also designate the chair. You all decide um, the terms, whether or not you're going to compensate the board and all of that. And like the manager said, we can have those discussions um, at, at a later time. Um, and then the authority shall report the receipts and expenditures each quarter and add at the end of the fiscal year to the town council. So they have to come before you, let you know how much money has been collected and um, how those funds are going to be spent. Any questions? I don't have a question. And Todd, you asked a question right here. I just, for, for everybody who's sitting in the room, I don't know, does everybody knows what a, a the occupant, I don't think we've explained what it is, really. It, an occupancy tax is a tax that when people come, <coughs> If, if we had a hotel, and we don't have a hotel here yet, but when we do have a hotel, when they come stay here, and there are plans to, to build a hotel, when they stay here, they pay an occupancy tax. So it's, it's not a tax that's really taxed for the Indian Trail people. If you go to, um, I just made re uh, reservations for three different places today, uh, Albany, Georgia, doesn't matter, the, three different places. And everywhere I made a reservation, there's an, there's an occupancy tax that I have to pay or that my company has to pay, and they do. But we have not been allowed to have an occupancy tax because of the way the state of North Carolina works. We have to do it in this procedure. Now, what doesn't make sense to me is, and has in all these years, in Monroe they have an occupancy tax, in Matthews they have an occupancy tax, but... We're right in the middle. We touch both of them, and neither one, and, and we don't, and we weren't allowed to have one unless we go through this process. Now, I think in the past you didn't have to go through that. I think you, the, the General Assembly at one time could just approve an occupancy tax, but they hate the word tax, so what they're going to do is put it on a referendum for us to vote on. And to me, it's a no-brainer. Uh, it's it's a tax that, that, that we do not... We do not pay unless you get a hotel room. If you live here, you're not, a, you're not likely to get a hotel room here. Be very unlikely to get a hotel room here. So uh, anyway, I wanted to explain that just to, you know, we talked about it. Let's go ahead and explain it. So 
I hope I hope we get it, but that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. Go ahead. Go ahead, Todd. Sorry. The uh, voter referendum, does that have to coincide with the municipal election, or can it be any year? It does not. It could be any year. Okay. And what's the cutoff date to let the Board of Elections know we want a voter referendum? That, I don't know. I'm, we're going to have to reach out to the Board of Elections and see what their internal requirements are. The good thing is we don't have to determine the language that goes on the ballot. It's specific in, in the statute. The legislature told us exactly what has to be on the ballot. Because I just wonder if we had time this year to put it on the ballot. I think so. We do. You think I so? think we do. I, I, I mean, so you're going to find that out? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Clarence? With the 10 day public notice, since most people don't read the newspaper anymore, is there another way that um, we have to put the notice out to coincide with it, or is it just a newspaper? We still follow the legal requirements of public notice. That is a newspaper of general circulation in the town, but um, I'm sure we can, it'll be on the website. You know, we, I'm sure we could do Facebook posts. Um, there's other ways we can also post notice, but you're right. A lot of people aren't reading the newspaper, but we're still required to follow. Thank you. I'm just curious, and I'm asking you this, Melody or Town Mike, both. Um, would it, um, would it expedite anything if, if we took a, not a made a motion, but just say, just ask everybody what they thought of it? And I would, I would think everybody up here would be for an occupancy tax. Um, and would that expedite it at all that we want to go ahead and, and, and do it? I mean, we'd still have to adopt the resolution. That's true. But, I mean, we could go ahead and start doing it. Go ahead and start reaching out to the we Board of Elections. We start doing and something if there's a time limit on doing it. The state's already passed it for us to be able to put it on a voter referendum. We've got to put it on the ballot. Right. That is the right. next step. Right. So, yeah. Right. I mean, but, but, so, so I, I understand I'm, I mean, that. If you're yeah. asking that, yeah. I'm for the referendum. Okay. I mean, yeah. yeah me too. That's what you're asking. Right. Think, right. Correct. Right. Thank you, Mr. Okay. So the next steps, we can reach out to the Board of Elections and find out their time frame. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? M Mr. Mayor, we'll give you a follow-up report at your February meeting on what the Board of Elections has, has said. Okay. Thank All right. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> thank you, Melanie. Thank you, uh, Mike. Um, all right. This uh, new business selection of planning board members to uh, fill two vacant vacancies. Let's start out um, with the planning board. Um, in all right, you got two people raising your hand. Go, go ahead. Okay, I, I'll, I'll go, and then they can go. That's fine. Okay. Uh, first one is uh, I'd like to nominate Mike Kappa and Kananko to fill unexpired term for seat four planning board with term ending June 30th, 2025. Okay. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor? Uh, Mr. Barber, Mr. Ambergi, in favor? All. Not in. I, I, I hate almost doing this because I don't know if you. All in, it's that's not in favor. Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, there's uh, Clarence is uh, not in favor. Dennis, Crystal. Okay. So three to three to two that fails. Uh, anybody else? I would like to nominate David. I'm gonna mess up his last name, but. Uh, Pettigamus. Yeah, Pettig Pettigamus. Pettigamus. Still unexpired term for seat one planning board. With term ending 6-30-24. All in favor? Unanimous. All right. Anybody else? I want to nominate Ken Curtis to fill unexpired term for seat one of planning board with term ending 6-30-24. All in favor? Unanimous. Very good. All right. That brings us down to um, Board of Adjustments. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to nominate um, William Wilson to, uh, to, f to fill unexpired term for seat four of the Board of Adjustments with term ending 6-30-24. Okay, all in favor? Got Mr. Ambergi and Mr. Barber all against. You got Crystal, Dennis, and Clarence against. Anybody else? Uh, Clarence? So I'd like to make a motion um, or nominate um, Shamir Alley to fill the unexpired term for seat four of the Board of Adjustments with term ending 6-30-24. All in favor? You got uh, Clarence and Dennis. 
Crystal in favor, all against. You got Mr. Ambergy and, and uh, Todd against. It passes three to two. All right. That brings us uh, to the discussion items. <clears throat> discussion of allowing roosters and town limits. Ms. Deese. Good evening again, Mayor and Council. Um, what a beautiful animal, right? I just couldn't help myself, so. Um, this is an item that we heard from public comment. I think we've had some conversations. Um, I just have a few key points to share with you, and then I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, we did poll um, the North Carolina listserv um, for planning. We have a um, basically like an email list where we can reach out to all the planners in the state. Um, so tell me to ask us to reach out to those folks. Um, I will tell you quickly that um, when I was a young planner, um, I read the listserv a lot to learn things, and we had this thing called Chicken Friday right and every Friday you got made fun of if you didn't post something related to the topic of chickens so um, this this has caused um, potentially chicken Friday to be stirred up again um, the the planners across the state had a lot of fun with my question so um, but in in some of that fun we did discover that um, overwhelmingly the majority of jurisdictions prohibit roosters, um, like 95% of the the, um, the majority, the responses we got prohibit, prohibited roosters, and then the other five um, mentioned it through their nuisance ordinance. Um, so it, it might would allow roosters, but then under the nuisance ordinance, it said you have to basically keep the rooster quiet. So I'm not sure how you do that necessarily, but... Um, a rule of thumb uh, for a planner is that you should not amend the ordinance for one specific situation um, because that normally has negative consequences. And then um, we also have been in communication with um, the sheriff's office and we do realize that allowing roosters, if that is your choice, um, you just need to understand that that is going to increase calls for service for the sheriff's office. Um, because the the noise complaints or the nuisance complaints will, will possibly come after hours. So that's all I have for you, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay, we've talked about this. Um, any discussion? Any more, Mr. Barber? How many jurisdictions were surveyed? We sent out um, to the entire state. Uh, we probably looked at about 50 different jurisdictions. Not everyone, um, not all 50, we got responses from the listserv. I mean, planners were busy, so, you know, folks often don't respond. But we did um, do additional surveys in the nearby area so that we could know kind of what the surrounding folks do as well. And do we know how many sheriff's calls are getting in the county for roosters? Um, we do not have those numbers. I do know that um, within the last two years, we've had 17 cases, code enforcement cases. Now, that, that number of 17 really doesn't mean a lot because in the way we handle code enforcement, we, we really try to take a common sense approach. So if you have a rooster, your neighbors complained, we're going to approach you, we're going to talk to you, we're, we're not going to try to, you know, create a case immediately just to show numbers. Um, so that, that 17 is, is probably very low um, compared to the actual enforcement we've been doing. Yeah, seven, there's been 17 calls for roosters? No, there's been 17 cases um, within the last two years. So a situation where um, a code enforcement officer may go and talk with you about a complaint they've got, um, if you don't handle the situation, then we are forced to create a case and actually send you a, a violation. So 17 situations were escalated to that, that point. I just didn't know we were getting rooster calls, but that's okay. We are. We are. <laughs> you know. We, we get all sorts of calls in, in, in the code enforcement world. We're still a small town. <laughs> Andy Griffith. 
Yes, Dennis. Um, so from what I understand, with the lar their larger cities do allow roosters, but they require a permit. And from a little bit of studies I've done on it, uh, if somebody does call on a rooster in those cities and there's a complaint, then I guess they're going to be warned. And then after that, then they remove the rooster. So whether you have a legalized rooster or not, you still could possibly lose your rooster if you don't control the noise. Correct. That That's actually, the, uh, you're correct, the city of Charlotte, which I was very surprised with. I would think that most of the larger jurisdictions um, would prohibit them. We actually got a lot of the um, feedback from, from the state listserv was smaller communities, um, even in more rural areas, um, that, that prohibited roosters as well. So really, I mean, to be really, really safe, if you want to have a rooster, is to check with your neighbors and whatever and see if they have a problem with a rooster so you don't get complaint calls. Correct. I will say that um, we we do not actively go look for roosters. Uh, we do we do enforce this on a complaint basis. Now with dogs, do you do the same thing? I mean, how do you take care of a dog that's barking that people won't, you know, won't stop? It's very similar. Um, it goes up under the um, the nuisance noise ordinance as well, um, but we we get we deal with a lot of those situations as well. I imagine you get a lot of dog calls. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask how many questions? cases did you have on dogs? Hey, Tom. Uh, uh, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Mayor. Mm, yeah. The uh, now I understand, you know, what you came in here about changing the ordinance, but. My question is, is, you know, is there not an option of maybe uh, issuing someone a special permit or something like that? I mean, in a case-by-case -case scenario, instead of just opening the whole town to roosters, I didn't know if, like, it, it, I don't know if that's a legal option w without changing the ordinance or, you know, I, I know in zoning you can do a special permit, but I didn't know in something like this, you know, or... If, if, I don't even know if that's a possible scenario. I'm yeah, just asking. I, I would think it would be more of, um, as Councilmember Gay was alluding to, is you know, if your neighbors don't complain, we're not going to come look for your rooster. Otherwise, there's no way for the town to go on record and say, yes, Councilmember Barbara, you can have a rooster, but Mayor, no, you cannot. So the the code would have to be amended. Um, even if you wanted to craft some language to give special situations, um, right now that that code that's in place would not allow for for that. Because I know we got roosters in town. Some people have some. I, I don't know if they're grandfathered in or how that works. But anyway, that that was my question to you know see if there was a special scenario and if if Mr. Mushi could look into something that legal avenue or whatever. But that, that was just, that was my question. Thanks for the answer. <laughs> Most permits run with the land, run with the property, right? So if the homeowner moved, they couldn't then take the rooster with them. Right. Okay, yeah. Thank and, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Go ahead. One of the problems that we've got is we're still, I mean, the geography of this town is big, but we still got an awful lot of rural areas still in this town. And so, I mean, the complication is can you, I mean, you, somebody who has a small farm, um, I mean, you know, they, they should really be allowed to have a rooster. So um, that's what complicates the whole issue. And, of course, you know, back when they could annex you into a town and you couldn't stop if you had a small farm and you had roosters, and then what do you do? So, I mean, you kind of almost have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And then, you know, when the complaints come in, then you, you know, then you you got to address it. So it's a it, it's a hard, hard situation. It is. And we, we could, I think I believe uh, back in December when we um, broached this subject, I mentioned that um, RSF I think would be appropriate, but that doesn't help the, the current situation. Very good. Well, that brings us um, to, uh, now we don't have a, a, a motion on this. Is this just a, a nod of the head? Um, we, we would just simply need direction if you want us to pursue amending the ordinance because this provision is in the Unified Development Ordinance and not the Municipal Code. It would be required to go to planning board with all um, state law you know, notice requirements. To, okay. 
I think Todd, I don't, I don't know who made this, but let's say a guy has, is, is, is in the town and um, he, he's dead, he, nobody lives around him and he's got, and he gets a rooster, okay? Um, not really bothering anybody. If somebody doesn't call and complain about that rooster, then he's, it, I mean, what are they going to do? I mean, it, 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 it's, if you live in a, an out, an area, that that it's not, then then that, right. that's probably cool. It's okay, you know. I, I would if if I did that, and it could be if if I already had a rooster and nobody's complained, they're probably not going to, to complain. But if they do complain, you you, you know you, you got a problem. And um, I have asked. I I I, I, I took this pretty seriously because I wanted to find out. And I'd say ninety nine percent of the people that I, I that's right I didn't find anybody that was for roosters in town and and the reason I say that and I think every, you have a good reason to want one is there's so many neighborhoods now you have Brandon Oaks you have Holly Park you have um, Bonterra and you live on a quarter acre lot and um, or less or less yeah in Bonterra you live in less than a quarter acre lot. And I love my neighbors, but if my neighbor guy had a rooster, and I don't know if I'd love him anymore. And and here it it is the the what, I, there's a guy that lives down the road and across the street. He's not in the town, and yes. he has roosters. And I stopped on the way to a council meeting. This is back in December, and they were they were sitting at the supper table. They had two sons, grown sons, sitting there. And I I walked in and they let me in. And I said, listen, we're we're talking about roosters, and you have roosters and, and you have uh, chickens right there by Poplin Elementary and uh, I said what what would you think about bringing roosters into uh, Indian Trail and he looked at me like are you crazy uh, you know or, or you, or you you really want to do something and his two sons uh, and I'm not sure if they live in Indian Trail they were grown said uh, not not in my neighborhood you're not you're not going to bring bring in a roosters and and here's what he said he said, "Roosters, roosters don't just crow at six o'clock in the morning. They could crow ten hours a day or twelve hours a day, uh, and you you don't have any control over them. You can't take them in the house. I don't think I've never seen roosters in a house. But you know, and if a dog barks, you, you as you know, Andy, people get you get dog barking. You get, um, but you can take that dog in the house. And and we got people complain." Uh, about dogs, you know, but you can think. So it's not, I don't think that we don't want to do it. And that it's just, I don't think the town's people want roosters in an in Indian trail. That, that, and that's what I want to, I want to do what the town's people want to do. So anyway, with that being said, can we get, we get a general consensus of what you, what, what you think? Yes. Oh, uh, Mr. Bushy asked us to look into it. So, yeah, we did, and uh, you know, so uh, I mean, the council can do what they want. I'm, 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 I'm indifferent on it. I know most HOAs aren't going to allow animals, but that you know, so it's kind of different. You know, Bon Terrace and probably HOA had, and my HOA would have stuff against stuff like that. So you know, but anyway. We looked that, into it. Councilmember Barber, that's actually a really good point. You know, we have, I think, over 90 HOAs now, so we will be creating a rule that largely wouldn't apply to, to most parcels. Joe's a, a good friend and a fellow uh, Lions Club member, and I feel for him, I really do, and, and I really kind of like you to know, come up with a don't crow, don't tell, or, or whatever, but I, I hate for him to leave tonight without some kind of a firm situation, and um, and, and I've come up with a solution. I have a rooster for him that falls within our UDO and could us to take home to the wife, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> he might not think that's funny, but Mr. Bucci, I, 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 I see him smiling, so Dennis, I think you're safe uh, when you walk out the door tonight. Uh, Tell Chris <laughs> I said hello. <laughs> I just, I, it just reminded me, just take the 10 seconds. I broke my leg one time, and my sister was at the beach. She's seven years older than me, and she said she was bringing me something back from the beach. And I was all excited in a wheelchair, and she brought me back a blow-up leg, and I hated her for it. <laughs> I, I, and I didn't think it was funny, 
And I did not think it was funny. It, it was, it, she thought it was funny, and it, it was not funny. But anyway, uh, so Clarence, we'll start your in. Just yay or nay, and then we'll go, or whatever. No. Okay. Dennis? I'm, I'm for don't crow, don't tell. I mean, you know, check with okay. your neighbors. And, so you're, and you're, so you're, that. So I, I got a neighbor that has a rooster, and I don't mind. I grew up in a rural area, so I don't complain. Uh, so I, I just kind of like that, you know. If nobody complains and you got a nice little place to keep, well, that's not what we're asking, Dennis. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm for uh, guide, you know, guidelines on roosters or any other nuisance that people can't live with. But uh, I think that we need to be lenient uh, in, in this town because we are so diversified. We got, you know, we do have subdivisions, and I can see an executive not wanting to walk out on his deck with some clients and a rooster next door crowing and carrying on. Uh, but then again, you know, a quiet little neighborhood. Um, but so uh, we get, you know, we do have to have some kind of a control. Crystal. So I'm going to say no. I don't think that we should change it for that. But, I mean, if nobody complains, go for it. Okay. Uh, Tom? No. Okay. Tom? I'm Todd? Okay, mm -hmm. it's resolved. Okay, I, I'm sorry, but I don't don't think we we're, we're I don't consensus is we're not going to change it. Correct. Okay. Thank you for the direction. Okay, brings us back brings up to this, uh, discussion of 74 bus service, uh, Mr. McLaurin. Um, I'm paying attention to you. I'm just got to refer to an email. Um. In FY24, you agreed to work with the county to fund the 74X bus line. As I reported to you, the increase in ridership was 5.5%, according to CATS, when you measure from October to October. The county's contract with CATS runs from October 1st to September 30th, and they have to give an answer to CATS by January 31st whether they're going to continue the route. And I think it's been the consensus, and I think it's been a good decision by this board that we support the 74X bus. Um, so I had some conversations. Hang on a minute. I had some conversations with the county back in December whether we were interested. The answer was my understanding from the board is that we would support it, but we do it as part of our budget process. And so I have before you in your agenda package tonight an interlocal agreement that I'm going to ask you to approve. The interlocal agreement covers both the current fiscal year, FY24, and FY25, and it runs through June 30th, 2025. The formal contract is between CATS and... Um, and Union County, but we have agreed, as it says in the contract, to help support the bus route. So let me tell you what we have been doing on our end, just so you know. We have created a dedicated web page for the 74X bus line. Uh, we have been sharing information about the 74X bus line in both the August and September newsletters. Uh, we have shared it on our social media page over 10 times. We have been sharing it in our weekly IT update, Indian Trail update, 10 times to date. The most recent was on January 5th update, and that uh, particular sharing, the 74 link was, cl uh, we monitor clicks like everybody else, was clicked more than 100 times. So there's interest out there for this bus line, and we can increase it. Uh, I did talk to the assistant county manager today to express our support in this effort and really encouraged him and his staff to really push CATS to try to make sure that we get the word out about the 74X bus line. Uh, the buses I've seen, I've seen some that have not been quite as full as others, but I've seen others that have been full. I'll be happy to answer any questions, but otherwise we would ask your approval. We saw an increase from last year of $1,500 for 24, I believe. 
five point five percent. I I'm think it's about, a, uh, the, the the numbers, the, the money that we have to. Oh continue. yeah, we we went up about fifteen hundred because we haven't gotten the price. What do we for twenty five then? They don't know yet. Um, they will look at it again in December of this year, and then the county will make a decision whether they want to continue to contribute or not. As a side comment, I will mention Council Member Ambergy. I have encouraged the county to have talks with Stalins about an atrium, about having a stop there. And I don't really know why Monroe pulled out, but it probably wouldn't hurt for Monroe to get back into it also. Because one of the things, and you heard this last year, there's a lot of people that work in downtown Charlotte that if they can get on that bus, they can read, they can study, they don't have to worry about wear and tear on their car, they don't have to worry about the $200 a month parking, and it, it works out. Oh, Clarence? Just a comment. You know, when the uh, riders came before council, I wasn't on the council, and um, so I was running for council, and I actually went out and uh, spoke to them, um, and a lot of the riders were very appreciative. Um, and I went back to visit. You got about half of them are coming from Monroe. They're pretty excited, and that keeps cars off the road. But also, you know, my sister was a bus rider, and she um, really appreciated that she can jump on the bus and get to Charlotte. Um, but I went back and you know, try to keep a count, and it is, the ridership is uh, increasing. But also, very, something kind of weird is, there's actually more people riding the bus back. Um, so that is something to keep in consideration <coughs> also. Um, but, you know, when the time comes, I like to make a motion. But I just wanted to add that, because I've seen, I personally went out there, seen the ridership is up, <coughs> and especially, like I said, coming back as well. Very good. Well. Um, if nobody, anybody else, you, you have any, uh, I just want to say Clarence, I know he's been down there to the, he gets up early. What time's that first bus leave? 6.31. 6.31. So get down there and talk to the bus riders. And then there's another bus that comes. What time does it come? 7.04. 7.04. Or depart. Appreciate your going down there and, and, and actually speaking with them and finding out how many people are riding the bus. And, um, you know, I think as a council, uh, I'll try to be quick we, we need to look at this because if Monroe has got half the people riding the bus and they're coming to Indian Trail to to uh, to get on it and we're paying we're footing the bill for it you know we, we, we need to ask for a little help uh, on that and I don't mind you know but but for, for them to bail out and they're got half the people and they come you know, we could do the same thing and just go to Matthews and bail out. You know, we could just keep bailing out until we get, get – and Matthews is, is, I think, maybe part of Katz as part of Mecklenburg County uh, anyway. And I don't want to do that. So maybe we can, <coughs> we can ask uh, – maybe next year we can ask you, Gary, to, to, to <laughs> say, hey, man, uh, help us out here um, um, because we, we need help. I, I think we all would, would agree with that, that um, – why we're putting the whole bill, I don't know. Well, but, I think, uh, Mayor, if I could suggest the whole bill is like a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty thousand, but, but we're the, the only paying. we're the only municipality that's agreed to participate. I mean, we're on the mis okay. municipality paying. County pays the rest. So, uh, if you'd like to make a motion, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the interlocal agreement with Union County as presented. Uh, all in favor, unanimous. Okay. Um, in your original agenda that went out on January 9th, you saw a project update. A lot of that we've already discussed tonight. Um, I put an extra copy at your desk. I will mention a couple of things that are coming up at your February meeting, and I have a couple of items, manager update items that aren't in your agenda package that I'll talk about. Um, our next meeting is February 13th. We've got ARPA resolutions. Uh, we will present a proposed FY25 budget schedule. We do have a public hearing on some UDO amendments, a uh, watershed plan, as we talked about earlier. We're also going to ask the council to consider approving a policy to allow us 
to uh, take the income that we're getting off the two parcels on this land back over here and designate it to the multi-generational community center fund that you set up uh, going back to July 1, 2023. Uh, I've also received a request from one of the council members that the cemetery sign is missing. We don't really know where it went, who put it up, and when it got gone. So um, I've agreed we'll put it on the agenda, see if y'all want us to put a, a new cemetery sign up there. We have been in touch with the local delegation. Uh, we think that they will be here on March 12th. Uh, we will confirm that in the next few days. Uh, speaking of legislature and legislative, uh, there is a chamber event on Friday, February 2nd uh, from 8.30 to 10 at the Ag Center. Deadline for registration to that event is tomorrow at noon. I'll be out of town that day, but I've got a couple staff members attending, and I know some of you plan to attend. I think it's very important that we have a good show showing from the town of Indian Trail. Also, uh, February 15th from 5.30 to 7.30, there's an elected official reception. Deadline for that registration is February 9th. I'm unable to attend that, but hopefully you can fit it in your schedule. That is a Thursday night. Um, should I continue on, Mr. Mayor? You're there. Go ahead. I'm there. My throat doesn't dry out first. Uh, I've got two items I want to talk about very briefly. One is the GFOA, GFOA award that we won recently. And then I want to talk to you about our priority visioning workshop. And all of you have had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Walton, and I certainly appreciate you taking time out of your day to do that. Uh, if you remember... Uh, in talking about the GFOA award, about 18 months ago, we saw a need to build a better budgeting system, one with more transparency, one with more accountability, and one that would eliminate some of the errors of ex exchanging spreadsheets back and forth. And so I asked the finance department, I said, go out and look for a computer budgeting software which would meet our needs and allow us to tell our story not only to you but to the public in a more better fashion than just a bunch of numbers because numbers in and of themselves without some explanation is not very helpful. Finance department went to work. They identified a product put out by ClearGov, a nationally recognized and uh, respected company that was selected. And so you, we appreciate you agreeing to fund that project. And so last year about this time, you'll recall, the finance department was doing a couple things. One, they were working on the FY24 budget that we're in now, and at the same time rolling out a new software package and tying it into our IT um, infrastructure. As we got down to the final layers of budget approval, in the May-June time frame, the staff started working on an application to the GFOA, which is Government Finance Officers Association, to be considered for the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. A few days ago, it was a complete surprise. We won the award. As I told you in an email, this is a big, big, big deal. Very rarely do cities, first time out, get the award. To my knowledge, we're the only city in Union County that has gotten it, at least in recent memory. I haven't gone back to check. This award represents a significant achievement by the town and reflects the commitment of the governing body, you, and the staff to meeting the highest principles of government budgeting. And we had to satisfy some national guidelines or 14 mandatory guidelines and part of one of the things I read these some of the comments by the scores and they talked about how well the town had tied the budget to the priorities that y'all had adopted in 2021 that's why we keep coming back to those 
priorities. We also had to add information that wasn't required by North Carolina law, but it needed to be in there, which would include things like mission statements, objectives, goals, accomplishments, performance measures. Um, we also have our budget up on the website, and all of y'all, I think, got a copy of this big book right here. This was a major undertaking, but the staff stepped up. And as I mentioned, did something that many municipalities do not do, and you should be proud of them. In a few meetings from now, when we get the award, we're going to have a formal presentation to recognize the finance staff for their hard work. And while the finance staff was the lead organization on this, all of our leadership team contributed in their way of providing the things such as accomplishments, performance measures. Uh, Abby, I think, helped them, and Bobby, and about everybody on the staff had some role to play in that. So I'm very proud of them. As we start down the, the path of the FY24-25 budget, we look forward to making this book even better to provide the best product possible. So now let me shift to the other item I want to talk about. I appreciate y'all agreeing to fund uh, a contract with Mr. Walton for us to look at a priority-based strategic work plan. You've heard me say for the last four or five months that the objectives we developed in 2021, some of you were on the board at the time. It was COVID. It was remote. It was a tough two sessions to get through, but we came up with nine priorities. And those priorities have served us well for a long time, but it's now time to step back and look at those and see what do we want to change? How do we put more specificity in the priorities so we can better measure our performance? Mr. Walton, who has over 40 years of service, uh, started his career in the town of Wake Forest near Raleigh and later went to work as an assistant to the Speaker of the North Carolina House and then ended up in Charlotte. Now, just because he worked in Charlotte a number of years, he ain't no big city guy, I'm going to tell you. He grew up in the Sand Hills over around Southern Pines, Aberdeen, that area, and his roots are really good old North Carolina country. So he, um, after retirement, he continues to, to work. He leads the Capstone Program, which if, if you're familiar with the Masters of Public Administration uh, at UNCC, that's special projects that students do, and a lot of those involve working in smaller towns. When Ruffin Hall was a long-serving manager in Raleigh, retired, they formed the company. And since 2021, they've worked with both big and small towns. They've worked with Cary, which is about 80,000, to Morrisville, which is right outside of Raleigh, very similar to us, which is about 30,000, Wilmington, I like to compare us a lot to Holly Springs. If you've been up to Holly Springs, we're very similar. We're right near a big city. We've got a big beltway. Um, they've got a downtown, but we're working on ours, and ours is going to be better, Tom. Um, he's worked with Stalins for a number of years. In fact, he's still working with Stalins, and he's worked with, with Maiden over in Catawba County, which is 3,700 people. So the purpose of the workshop is not for him to come in and say, well, they do this in town A, so you need to do this in town A. It's not that at all. You were elected to create a vision for the town and to set the priorities for the town. And that's why he wanted to meet with all of you individually to get your ideas as elected officials. What do you think is important? And we wanted to extend it instead of doing just a one year, extend it several years. And as we get better at this, start to extend it even further. He's met with the staff uh, several weeks ago. And while we're a government agency, we're also a business. Make no mistake about that, we're a business. We've got 40,000 customers that we work for and we serve everything from police protection to picking up their garbage to fixing their potholes. And so we have, to th we have to think about what are we accomplishing today and what are we going to be accomplishing five, ten years down the road. <coughs> You've had a great presentation tonight by Todd Hunsinger, and you're seeing those roads start to come together. And as they come together, what is the next chapter this council wants to roll up its sleeves and get involved in? 
We talked a little bit tonight about phase two on Indian Trail Road. Where do we want to be, build the next park? Where do we need to do sidewalks and things like that? And it takes some setting of priorities to make that happen. So while we are having businesses come in, we are having industries come in, we always have to keep our eye on the future. So when we originally planned this thing, we, we talked about doing it in two sections. One is a, a section on Friday from 9 to 1 on February 23rd. And I think the, the second one is right now scheduled for March 5th, which is on a Tuesday. The first one's on a Friday. The next one's on a Tuesday from like 9 to 12. And we had originally talked about having it off-site at the hospital, but a, a comment was raised about COVID and flus and everything else. So if you would like to have it here in this building, we can do that. You know, I just need to get some nodding of the heads one way or the other. We would ask if we have it in this building that we that y'all not sit up there, that you sit out here in a round table. And at the end of the day, we want this to be a workshop for you. It's not for the staff. Staff can offer suggestions. We can offer you some comments and suggestions of things you might want to consider based on what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. But because you're the council, it is your responsibility to set the vision and it is our role to try to help you carry it out. And that's all I've got to say. Oh, one more important thing. Like you know, for any time the majority of the council gathers to discuss town business, it's an open meeting. So the public is welcome to attend. That's all I got. Okay. Wow. This has been a, a good long meeting, and I commend the Boy Scouts for sitting back there through all this. this is, you guys were great. You, I, I know how bad you wanted to run out that back door. <laughs> but you know what? Thank you for staying. And you've earned your badges today. Boy, I can tell you that. Badge, yeah. uh, you really have. <laughs> Okay, I think that brings us to uh, council comments. Councilmember Gay. Thank you all for coming. I wanted to uh, congratulate the finance department and Jim uh, for their uh, award that they've received. And I know you, you had, uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of criticism during the campaign about budgeting and that sort of thing here. And I think that um, you answered a lot of the, the um, comments that were erroneously made. Um, I, I'm uh, glad that um, our consultant that we've hired got a good review from Mike. That you know, there's, unfortunately, some people will put information out that's not true, and I don't understand that. But um, I, I found him to be very informative. The, the little bit that uh, that I had, so I think that may fall under our ethics policy about uh, social media and things that are said. But um, anyway. Um, Hope everyone has a safe trip home, and uh, let's look for some warmer weather, and uh, see you the next meeting. Thank you, Councilmember Ambergy. Again, Jim, congratulations to you and the Alicias. Um, God bless everyone. Have a great evening. Councilmember Austin Brooks. Hey. Well, um, as newly elected, I. If you saw me on Facebook, I'm excited about everything. So I have a lot to say tonight, and I'll try to make it as quick as I can. I'm going to be all over the place. But um, by the time we are at our next meeting, it'll be uh, February, which is Black History Month. Um, hopefully we all can celebrate the achievements that Americans made in this country. And also, um, with that said, the uh, Union County Library is holding this Black History Month fashion walk and hair show Sunday, February the 4th at 3 p.m. Not exactly sure the location, so you can check their website for that. Um, just again, want to mention the uh, Rotary Fundraiser with the Washington Wizards, February 2nd, 7 p.m. at Sun Valley. Um, let's see. Jim or staff, um, congratulations on the budget award, uh, well deserved. And uh, staff as a whole, I just want you to know that um, the word is out that you have done great things and it hasn't gone unnoticed. So um, thank you for that. Um, I'm sorry I missed the uh, Crime Stoppers 
fundraiser, but I was out um, at the Essentials of Government, so thank you for to all these hardworking people up here that attended that and represented Indian Trail. Um, at the Essentials of Government, one thing I learned that I wanted to bring back is that everyone in North Carolina is um, being impacted by people moving from other areas. It's uh, funny because just like everyone I spoke to said that they are the number one, um, they're number one in the country as far as growth. And I'm thinking everybody can't be number one. But the point is we're all going through it. We're all having people move here. We're all having, you know, we don't have the infrastructure. And if you've been in a place for a long time, you're overwhelmed with people from other areas coming in. So, you know, it's here. We have to deal with it. And this council will do their best. Um, I want to... Uh, correct something that I said last time. I said that we all should have name tags. What I was trying to say is um, I like to see us get hello my name, those little stickers so that everyone can wear them and we can get to know each other, the people who come to the meetings. And thank you, those of you who came to the meeting. Um, last thing is that I had a, um, a citizen tell me that I should explain my votes when I do vote. And Mr. Musi, I want you to know that I actually talked to a lot of people about your situation, um, or as far as roosters are concerned, I actually have chickens, but we don't have roosters for that reason. Um, but they were some people that were for you, and but the majority of them said that it wasn't a good idea. But um, again, I'm excited to be elected. Um, I tell everybody that I work for the town now. I want to be employee of the month every month, and. Considering I was the only person elected, I have a good chance to be Rookie of the Year. But um, I'm excited to work with everyone up here. So thank you. You'll be Rooster of the Month. Oh, listen to you. <laughs> Barber. Congratulations to Jim and your staff. That was one fancy budget book. I, th I think that was twice the size of when I first got here four years ago. So, yeah, 270 some pages, I think. Anyway, it was a digital book, correct? Yeah, good job. The uh, National Alliance on Mental Illness, the Union County chapter, is having its annual meeting, open house, this Sunday at 5 p.m. at Benton. Heights Presbyterian Church on Concord Highway down in Monroe. Um, if you'd like to attend, I think one in five people are dealing with mental illness. The, uh, they offer a free family to family class, which helps the family deal with mental illness individuals. So if you'd like to attend, that is this Sunday at five o'clock. Uh, I'd like to wish Captain Hunky, he's not here, but uh, thank him for a job well done and taking care of our Indian Trail Division and wishing well in retirement. With that, also I'd like to congratulate Captain Mullis on taking over. And I know he's gonna do a great job and, uh, and the sheriff made a great choice. Mm, thank you. The, uh, other than that, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year and God bless you. Thank you. Council Member Buholic. All right, I do wanna thank everyone for coming again encourage people to come and get involved. It does make a difference. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Sides for mentioning our parks. I think that our parks are beautiful as well, and I think we definitely need more of them, and hopefully in the near future we can start working on something like that um, because Indian Trail is known for our parks, and I do think that we've done a wonderful job. Um, congrats, Captain Mullis. Well, soon to be Captain Mullis. Um, welcome. Uh, you've been part of us already for so long, but we definitely um, are excited for you to join. And um, just really excited for the budget workshop, uh, looking at our priorities and making sure we get them set. We want input from you as we're working through this um, these priorities. So, you know, reach out to one of us and let us know what your priorities are for the town. Um, one event that the mayor did not mention is there's coffee with the mayor on February 9th. Um, so that would be before our next meeting, I believe. So I just wanted to put that out there. It's at Rockhound Coffee inside Extreme Ice. Is that correct, David? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, other than that, congrats, Jim, and pretty much the entire staff, because everyone had something to do with the budget. So, you know, congratulations to all of you. It's a lot of work. I wouldn't want to sit there for hours and hours to do it, but, you know, we really do appreciate how much work you've put into it and how good it, uh, you know, it did turn out. 
Um, other than that, have a wonderful night, and I will see you all next time. Thank you. Mayor Cohn. Okay, I'll, I'll try to be quick. Boy Scouts, thank you for coming again. If you guys ever need me to come help you or come speak, let me know. I'd love to come down and, and talk with you. Uh, last night, did y'all eat before you came? We got a whole bunch of chicken fingers back there. Before you leave, who, who likes chicken fingers? Tell the truth, y'all do, don't you? Yeah, go back there. There's I hope I didn't overstep my boundaries, but but uh, if I did, go enjoy them. Get out of go, go over there and eat. We'll we'll get you. I'll I'll take you back there. Okay, um, uh, Captain Mullis, looking forward to you, buddy. Um, uh, Clarence, real quick. Welcome. This is actually your, really your first meeting other than being introduced here and uh, uh, appreciate all you do. Appreciate you all you did for the bus uh, down 74 going there in the mornings and all. it's just the way you are. You're a worker and, and thank you for all your hard work and uh, I look forward to working with you the next three years, four years. <coughs> um, uh, Jim Wanowitz, fantastic. 19,000 people in the country applied for what you got. Uh, and uh, you know the best thing about what, what you did is you made it very understandable for people like me who aren't, aren't CPAs and aren't accountants and like many of the people that live in Indian Trail where we can all understand what a budget is. I think that's the most important thing that you did and you do a great job. You keep our tax rate at 18.5%. And uh, you work miracles with that with that pen. And uh, thank you so much to both Alicia's and everybody in in your apartment department. You deserve it. Um, I'd like to say quickly to the staff, you're great. You, everything y'all do is great. Um, appreciate the the uh, the long. Um, what, Todd, what you did tonight, it, it took a while, but um, you know, you, you explained it. And uh, Adam, I appreciate you. Brandy, I really appreciate what you do. Uh, Brandy got some compliments this weekend um, because I got several emails over the weekend and uh, I pushed them on to, to, uh, to Brandy to ask her the questions on how to fix them. And I didn't expect an answer, but I got answers and she answered the people that, that, that and, and she got some kudos from it. We had some residents that said, thank you very much for your hard work and for your prompt response. And... Uh, Thank you. You make you make the mayor look good, and that's important. Uh, it's very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Appreciate what you do. Um, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover here. Uh, thank everybody for coming, uh, and uh, have a great new year. And I hope to see you here. Remember uh, the Harlem Wizards. If you want to go, Andy's going to dunk out there, and Jim's coming <laughs> back for his. Uh, to do the dunk contest again this year. So uh, looking forward to seeing y'all. Thank you for coming. God bless everybody. And uh, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you.